Are you tired of feeling overwhelmed? Have you craved a sense of control over your reactions? Are you curious about mastering your emotions? In today's fast-paced world, filled with uncertainty and challenges that can easily overwhelm us, discovering a source of timeless wisdom might seem out of reach. Yet, here you are, about to uncover the ancient secrets of Stoicism, tailored for those of us seeking peace and stability in the midst of life's chaos. This guide is more than just a set of old philosophical ideas. It's your personal roadmap to navigating life with more grace and strength than you might have thought possible. As we explore the heart of Stoic teachings together, you'll notice some ideas come up again and again across various aspects of life, whether it's dealing with personal trials, building stronger relationships, or fostering a sense of inner fortitude. Don't overlook the value of hearing these messages more than once. In Stoicism, repetition isn't just filler. It's the very process by which these lessons become part of who you are. Each time a principle is revisited, it's like another stroke of the artist's brush, gradually painting a masterpiece of understanding and practice in your daily life. This guide is here to walk with you as you learn to take charge of your emotional well-being, accept the ebb and flow of life, and cultivate a life led by virtue. Whether you're just starting to explore Stoicism or you're looking to deepen your existing practice, you've found the right place. Together, we'll discover how the wisdom of the past can bring you peace, happiness, and resilience in today's world. Imagine living your whole life thinking that every problem and failure was actually preparing you for something bigger. I understand that sounds like just another motivational quote you see on social media. But what if I told you that this isn't just a catchphrase? It comes from an old philosophy and has stood the test of time. Stoicism is a philosophy that teaches us not only how to deal with life's problems, but also how to accept them and use them to our advantage. Stoic teachings show us that the power to live a fulfilling life is not in changing our circumstances, but in changing how we react to them. They can help us not only survive, but also thrive in the face of personal trials, professional challenges, or just the everyday chaos of life. You've come to the right place if you've ever felt like you were always going against the wind, if you've ever thought how to find peace in the middle of the storm, or if you're just interested in how old knowledge can help us live better lives today. Discover how to use the ideas of Stoicism to turn your toughest situations into your biggest wins and learn how to live with purpose, honesty, and an unbreakable spirit. Have you ever caught yourself giving up on something you really wanted? We often go through days, weeks, or even years without really questioning the limits we've set for ourselves. But this is where the powerful question, why not, comes into play. The question is simple, but it can help us get past the fear and laziness that hold us back. Allow us to add some stoicism to this now. The Stoics didn't just sit back and let life happen to them. They were active and always looked at their lives, choices and actions through the lens of virtue and getting better. When faced with a problem or a choice, a Stoic would ask, why not take the path that leads to growth? This doesn't mean taking risks without thinking. It means making choices that are in line with your better self and your core values. When you're at a crossroads and not sure if you want to go into the unknown or step up your efforts, stop and ask yourself, why not? Why not try for that raise, start that project, or take that leap of faith towards your dreams? Our futures are shaped by the choices we make at these times. But here's the catch. Asking why not isn't just about facing problems from the outside. It's also about facing the stories we tell ourselves that hold us back. It's about fighting against self-doubt, the fear of failing, and the ease of things as they are. 
This is an action-oriented message telling you to rise above failure and accept your greatness potential. Don't forget that all the Stoic heroes you've read about, from Marcus Aurelius to Seneca, saw problems as chances to grow. They didn't settle for an easy and comfortable life. Instead, they pursued the road of virtue, resilience, and personal greatness. It's the same thing you do when you ask yourself, why not? You step into the field, ready to fully connect with life, to grow, learn, and come out better and smarter. The next time you feel like stopping, know that you have the power to change the story. You are strong enough to go beyond what you think is possible. Take on a tough attitude and ask yourself, why not? See how far your interest, courage, and dedication can take you. In the world of Stoicism, this never-ending search for improvement fits nicely with the idea of Procopton, which means keeping making progress or being a work in progress. Focusing on what they could change, like their virtues, actions, and reactions to things happening around them was what the Stoics believed in. Not perfection, but growth was what they were after. And that's what I want you to go after. Steady, unwavering growth. Think about it. Getting better is at the heart of everything important. Whether you're trying to get better at your job, improve your relationships, or find peace within yourself. Growth is what makes life worth living. Self-mastery is a stern virtue that fits well with someone who is always trying to get better. You're committed to becoming your best self, not for praise or approval from other people, but because it's the most honest way to live your life according to your values. But here's the thing, being concerned with getting better doesn't mean you're mean or cruel to yourself. It's about making a caring, long-lasting commitment to your growth. It's about enjoying the little wins and always wanting to move on to the next level of your development. There will also be mistakes and failures along the way. But like a true Stoic, you won't see these as losses. Instead, you'll see them as things you can learn from and ways to get better. So how do you develop this need to always be better? First, make sure your goals are clear, well thought out, and in line with your ideals. Every day, think about the things you do and choices you make, and ask yourself if they are in line with your growth goals. Challenges are good because they help you learn and push yourself. Most importantly, keep an open mind and a desire to learn. Be ready to change and improve your method at all times. The path to improvement never ends. Another layer to discover, a new skill to learn, or a new virtue to represent is always there. And it's in this never-ending search that we find the most happiness and satisfaction. As a result, let's make getting better a way of life, not just a way to get somewhere else. Let's push and support each other as we go along this road to reach new heights take charge of our own lives, and live each day with purpose, passion, and an endless desire to grow. Stoics are renowned for their unwavering dedication to their ideals, resilience, and steadfastness. They give something their all when they commit to it, not because they want praise or attention, but because they know that this is what it means to live a good, worthwhile life. They don't do their tasks or interests half-heartedly. Instead, they give their all to them. This shows that the value of our actions doesn't lie in how well they turn out, but in how committed we are to them. Giving it your all means putting all of your energy, attention, and hard work into your goals, no matter what they are. It means choosing every morning that you're not going to let life happen to you. Instead, you're going to use your thoughts, choices, and actions to make your future what you want it to be. Not only should you dream big, but you should also act big. You should take those big, brave steps that move you forward, even when the way is full of challenges and unknowns. Giving it your all isn't just about what you do, 
it's also about how you do it. What's more important? It means doing your work, taking care of your relationships, and working on yourself with honesty, energy, and sincerity. It means giving it your all, whether you're working on a project, spending time with family and friends, or thinking about how you've grown as a person. And when problems come up, which they always do, you have to face them with courage and resilience and use your inner strength to get through them. How can you start living your life with all your heart? Find out what's most important to you, your core beliefs, your most important goals, and your greatest hobbies. Then make a promise to follow these with all your heart. You should hold yourself to high standards and try to meet them every day, not because you feel like you have to, but because you want to live a full and honest life. Remember that giving everything you have is a way of life, not just something you do once. Every day, every moment, and every breath, you make this choice. As you follow this philosophy, you'll find that it not only helps you reach your goals, but it also gives your trip a deep sense of meaning and satisfaction. Let's set out on this path together, encouraging and supporting each other to give it our all, live with unshakable heart and purpose, and leave a legacy of greatness and virtue that lasts. Because what matters isn't just what we get, but also who we become along the way. Our world is full of temptations, things that draw our attention away, and, let's be honest, many reasons to go in a different direction. The real magic happens when you stick to your path, even when there's a lot of noise and chaos around you. You're standing up for something bigger. You are respecting your path, your beliefs, and, most of all, yourself. The Stoics knew that life is full of things that can take our attention away from our true purpose. On the other hand, they knew how important it was to stay the course and stick to their beliefs and goals. For Stoics, keeping on your road wasn't just about getting things done, it was about being honest and having good character. What does it mean for you to keep going? To be clear about your life's path, you need to know what you stand for, what you want to achieve, and what kind of person you want to be. It means you set your goals and stick to them, even when it rains and the water gets rough. The important thing is to remember that staying on your path doesn't mean being fixed or unwilling to change. Life is unexpected, and part of keeping on track is being able to change your sails when you need to, using what you've learned. The important thing is that these changes always fit with your core ideals and long-term goals. How then can you be sure you stay on your path? Being self-aware is the first step. Think about your beliefs, your goals, and how you want your life to go. You should write them down, read them often, and use them as a guide. Develop the self-control to make decisions that are in line with your plan, even if they are hard or unpopular. When you face problems or losses, keep in mind that resilience is essential. These things should be seen as chances to make you more determined and dedicated to your journey. People often tell us to keep our eyes on the goal and judge our success by the results we get. But what if I told you that letting go of your beliefs about what will happen gives you a lot of freedom and power? This is where Stoicism really shines, giving us a deeply freeing view that can change how we live our lives and how we think about success. There are some things we can control and some things we can't. This is what the Stoics teach us. What we do, how we feel, and what we intend to do are all up to us. As for the results, they are often determined by things we can't change. We can become frustrated, let down, or even hopeless when we focus too much on results. This is because we're holding on to something we can't really control. How do you move your attention away from results? Giving your all to something means putting your whole heart and soul into it, whether it's a work job, a personal goal, or a friendship. It means being fully involved in the process 
and enjoying the difficulties and chances to learn that it brings without getting too tied to the end result. Just think about how freeing it would be to do your work with love and dedication, not because you think it will get you awards or praise, but because you believe in it. Stoic wisdom is all about finding happiness and purpose in the things you do, not just the things they might lead to. To be clear though, not caring about results does not mean not caring about success or not setting goals. To be successful, you need to change how you think about it in terms of your own acts and character. Were you committed, courageous and honest in your actions? Did you learn and grow? From a stoic point of view, these are the real ways to measure progress. So how can you start living your life with this mindset? First, think about what you stand for and what kind of person you want to be. When you make your goals, think about the things you want to improve about yourself and the things you want to do, not the things you want to get from other people. When you start to worry about what might happen, Gently tell yourself of what you can really change and try to focus your energy on your actions and attitudes instead. Think of your life as a mirror that reflects back not only what you show the world, but also what's inside you. If you are angry, afraid or negative, it will show in everything you do and everyone you meet. On the other hand, if you work on virtues like honesty, kindness and resilience, they will show in your life and bring you good relationships and situations. Because they knew that a strong, good character is the basis of a good life, the Stoics stressed how important it was to build one. Some of them thought that you couldn't change the world around you, but you could change who you are in it. And if you work on being the best version of yourself, your life will automatically reflect those traits. How then, can you live by the idea that you get what you are every day? Start by regularly thinking about yourself. Look at your feelings, thoughts and actions with kindness and objectivity to find ways you can grow and get better. Encourage the virtues that matter to you, whether they are bravery in tough situations, determination to reach your goals or kindness to others. Remember that this isn't about being perfect or never making mistakes. It's about being aware of how your inner state shows up in the outside world. It means trying to make sure that your activities are in line with your best values and beliefs, even if it's hard. And when you fail, which we all do, you need to have the humility and resilience to learn from your mistakes and keep going on your path to becoming better. By accepting this stern advice, you give yourself the power to make your own world. You know that even though you can't change what happens to you, you have a lot of control over how you react and who you choose to be. As you become more in tune with your greatest ideals, the world around you will start to show the same quality and depth. Now, think about the problems you've had to deal with. They happen to everyone, no matter how big or small the problem is. Frustration, disappointment, or even hopelessness might be our first response. What if, though, we saw these problems as secret gifts, as things that help people grow and learn about themselves? That's the main idea behind this Stoic thought. When the Stoics talked about problems, they weren't being sarcastic or ignoring how hard life can be, they were well aware of the pain and trouble that problems can cause. However, they also thought that every problem had the potential for an advantage equal to or greater to it. What makes our experience unique is not the barrier itself, but how we deal with it. When we choose to see the problem as a way forward, we change from being passive victims of our situations to active, powerful change agents. How can you use obstacle is the way in your everyday life? When you face a problem, start by changing the way you think about it. Take a moment to think, what can I learn from this? How does this help me get better? 
Use difficulties as stepping stones to develop resilience, innovation and perseverance rather than letting them drain your energy and spirit. Accept the fact that the most gratifying roads often have the highest ascents. Your character growth and personal story are affected by the problems you face, the obstacles you get past and your determination. Each challenge is a chance to work on virtues like patience, courage and flexibility, which will make you smarter and stronger. Also, keep in mind that getting past problems often takes creative thought and a desire to go in new directions. We are forced to broaden our views, think outside the box and find skills we didn't know we had when we are going through hard times. By taking a stoic view of problems, we also learn to be thankful for the opportunities they give us to grow. We learn to value the road with all of its ups and downs because we know that the deepest lessons are often learned when things go wrong. Life is a big picture and it's easy to feel overwhelmed by how big our goals are or how hard the problems we face are. We might ask ourselves, what difference can my small contribution make? Now, here's the thing. Every big accomplishment is made up of many smaller ones that were put together by people doing small things. The Stoics knew that we can't change the big picture, but we can change the choices we make every moment. They teach us to live in the present and do what needs to be done right now without getting stuck on the big picture or the less than immediate goal. A call to action, do what little you can, tells us to live our lives with purpose and activity, no matter how small or humble our efforts may seem. Anyway, how can we follow this rule? First, break down your bigger goals into smaller steps that you can take. Think about what you can do today, even if it's just one little thing. Remember that what matters is how often and how hard you try, not how big the activity is. With each small step, you're putting together a base that will support your bigger goals in the long run. This stoic way of thinking also gives us the courage to find worth and meaning in the process, not just the outcome. Putting our attention on the little things we can do makes us more present, involved and often more productive. We learn to enjoy the trip with all of its ups and downs because we know that our daily actions and attitudes are what make us grow and feel fulfilled. We also develop humility and resilience by following this philosophy. We know we're not superpowers, but we also believe in our power and influence. We learn to think outside the box, change with the times, and keep going even when progress seems slow or impossible to see. It's easy to lose sight of what really means in a world where money, job titles and social media fans are often used to measure success. But what if we stepped back and looked at our success standards again? The Stoics teach us that getting things or making other people happy is not what success is all about. It's about building a strong character, living in harmony with nature and doing what we're supposed to do as people. Regardless of our situations, it's about being honest, fair, brave, and smart. This way of thinking about success gives us a lot of power because it puts it in our own hands. It's possible that we can't change the economy, the job market, or other people's thoughts, but we can always change our own deeds and virtues. So how can we begin to change what success means to us? It starts with thinking about yourself. Pause to think about what's important to you and the person you want to become. Think about the traits you admire in other people and want to improve in yourself. Then, make goals that are in line with these values, with a focus on your own growth and how you can make other people's lives better. To rethink what success means, you have to learn to value the process as well as the result. Even if they don't result in instant benefits, celebrate your efforts, resilience and success. Stoicism says that being successful is about more than just reaching your goals. 
It's also about how you deal with problems and failures. It means keeping your ethics and calmness no matter what is going on around you. Changing how you think about success can also help you be more fulfilled and happy. You can focus on what truly makes you happy and satisfied when you're not constantly looking for approval from other people. Most likely, you'll find that following virtue and having a real impact on the world is much more satisfying than any outward success. Society puts a lot of value on acceptance and recognition from others. It's easy to lose who we are and forget what drives us in the process of trying to be liked. But Stoicism is a strong counter to this focus on the outside world. It reminds us that our decisions and worth should be based on our own beliefs and virtues, not on the temporary views of others. The Stoics teach us that wanting to be liked can make us slaves. That's when we let other people's opinions and views control what we do and how we feel about ourselves. We feel a deep sense of freedom and sincerity when we let go of this need for approval from other people. We can follow our own values and views and do what we really believe is right and important, even if it doesn't make us popular or get us praise. How can we start to separate our deeds from the need to be liked? The first thing that needs to be done is becoming very self-aware. We need to know what drives us so we can tell the difference between actions that are based on wanting approval from other people and actions that are based on who we really are. This isn't always easy. You have to be honest and think about yourself but it's an important step toward having a more real and satisfying life. Next, we need to build trust in the choices and judgments we make. The Stoics stress how important it is to use reason and knowledge to decide what to do. When we believe in our own thinking and act in line with our well-thought-out beliefs, we count less on other people's praise. We can stick to the decisions we make, even if they're not popular or well understood, because we know they come from our core values. It's also important to accept that not everyone will like you. This is normal and will happen to everyone. Each of us is a unique person with our own views, ideals and points of view. We can't please everyone, and if we tried, we'd have to change all the time to meet other people's needs, which would make us lose our sense of who we are. Putting our attention on being real and honest with ourselves helps us find the right connections, ones based on mutual respect and values. We can find comfort in knowing that we're living honestly and in line with our stoic beliefs, even when we are criticized or turned down. Learning to say no is very important in a world where people are always trying to get our time, attention and energy. It's not enough to just say no to things we don't want to do. We also need to stand up for our values, goals, and independence. Stoicism teaches us to pay attention to what's important and within our power. Sometimes that means turning down requests, chances, or even demands that don't fit with our core values. The Stoics believed that we should live in harmony with nature, which meant that we should know and respect our own boundaries. These people knew that our time and energy are limited and that we need to be smart about how we use them. Then saying no becomes an important practice in judgment, a way to make sure we're focusing on what's truly valuable and helpful, not just what's urgent or expected of us. But let's be honest, it can be very hard to say no. It takes courage especially when we're used to being praised or when we're afraid of missing out or letting other people down. Stoicism, on the other hand, tells us to trust our own judgment and make choices based on reason and virtue, not on fear or peer pressure. When we say no with cool confidence, we're not just turning down an offer. We're saying a lot about our values and our desire to live our lives as they really are. How then can we say no more often? You need to be clear about what you stand for, what you value and what your goals are. You can tell which requests are in line with your path 
and which ones are not when you have a clear idea of your goal and your values. Remember that telling someone no doesn't have to be rude or angry. It can be done with respect and kindness, saying thank you for the offer while firmly declining. Also, getting better at saying no can be freeing. It frees you from tasks and responsibilities that aren't important, so you can focus on what's important. As you learn to accept your own wants and limits, it also boosts your self-respect. Surprisingly, it can also earn you more respect from others who will see how clear your goals are and how honest you are. In a world of difference, how can one really let go? It's about being aware of and accepting the difference between what we can and cannot control. We have power over our actions, attitudes and virtues, but not over the results, other people's actions or fate's whims. We can start to let go of the anger, stress and sadness that come from holding on to things we can't change when we really understand this. But let's be clear, letting go of differences doesn't mean not caring about anything. It means caring strongly about the right things, the ones that are really our choice, and being okay with the rest. It's about wisely using our energy, putting all of our heart and hard work into what we do, and not caring about the results. Just think about how much lighter you'd feel if you stopped worrying about every little thing that didn't go your way and let go of problems that don't really affect your core tasks and values. This is the freedom that Stoicism offers, a way to find inner peace and resilience no matter what life throws at you. To learn how to let go of differences, what steps can we take? Mindfulness is the first step, and it involves paying attention to our responses and gently telling ourselves of what we can control and what we can't. Like any skill worth learning, it takes practice as well. We can start with small problems that bother us every day and work our way up to bigger problems over time. I think we'll find something amazing as we practice. The less we try to control things we can't change, the more control we have over ourselves and how we react. Even when things are going crazy, we'll feel calm and clear again. When we follow the advice of Stoicism in our daily lives, we discover that our inner strength lies in our choice of how to react, our ability to concentrate on what's important and our ability to let go with ease. Remember that cultivating virtue, resilience and inner peace is the way to happiness and peace, not in getting praise or things from other people. Someone smart once said that it only takes five minutes to ruin an image that you worked hard to build. Imagine that I told you trust is what holds relationships together, whether they are with friends, partners, family or people we are just getting to know. Trust is very important. This movie talks about nine different types of people you might meet in a relationship. It will help you decide whether to trust them or not. I'm not here to make things more difficult. Instead, let's separate these types by carefully examining what makes them unique. To get a good sense of who they are, we'll look at both what they say and what they do. Why does this matter? We need to be careful about where we put our trust, because it is valuable. Now we'll get into the complicated world of relationships by showing you nine different people whose personalities might make you question how much you trust them. But this isn't just a story to teach a lesson. It gives you the information you need to choose wisely about who you can trust and honor. This exploration is your guide to finding real, satisfying relationships, whether you're looking for new ones or thinking about the ones you already have. Stay tuned and let's talk about the different aspects of trust. And finally, you should spend time and effort on your health and relationships because they are important to you. 1. The Manipulative Person People who are manipulators are always looking out for themselves and use a wide range of strategies that go beyond simple lies and taking advantage of people's emotions. 
This group of people uses a complex set of tricks to get what they want from people and events. This means that spotting the minor signs of manipulation is a difficult skill that needs a deep knowledge of all the tricks the manipulator can use. One well-known trick that is often used is factual distortion, which is when someone cleverly changes facts to fit their story. This not only makes things confusing, but it also makes it harder for the goal to make smart choices. Mismanipulators also use guilt and pity a lot, using emotional manipulation to make people dependent and easy to control. This kind of emotional abuse can show up in delicate ways, like pretending to be the victim or using old grudges to get people to feel sorry for them. Getting along with people who are manipulative requires a diverse method. Setting clear and strong limits is important, but it's hard to do right because manipulators are good at pushing limits and taking advantage of people who seem weak. As part of this protection system, staying alert and developing emotional intelligence are very important. Being very aware of your own and other people's feelings helps you spot tricks people are using to trick you and react appropriately. Also, having a strong sense of who you are is a great way to avoid being manipulated. Manipulators often take advantage of people's fears and weaknesses to make them less confident in their own skills and independence. By boosting their self-esteem and sense of who they are, people can build a wall around themselves that keeps manipulative people out. Another important way to protect yourself from influence is to communicate clearly. When you are clear about your needs, wants and limits, you set a clear framework for interaction. This makes it harder for manipulators to take advantage of vagueness or confusion. Being honest with each other when you talk to them builds trust and respect, which makes deceptive behavior less likely. In the end, the goal is to give people the tools they need to take care of their own mental and emotional health. Individuals can protect themselves from influence by developing their spotting abilities, boundary setting abilities, and mental resilience. This will also help to create a relationships that are better and more real. In this complicated dance of human relations, knowing how to avoid being manipulated becomes an important life skill that lets people do well in a wide range of social situations while keeping their integrity. 2. The person who spreads negative gossip. Individuals who enjoy criticizing others on a regular basis reveal important aspects of their personality through their chatter. When you talk to people who are quick to say bad things about others, you need to be careful because they might turn that bad talk around and say it about you. People who criticize gossip mongers often follow a pattern of behavior that goes beyond casual comments and shows deeper aspects of their personalities. They might be quick to find fault in others because they are insecure, want to be seen as better, or want to draw attention away from their own flaws. You can really tell a lot about the emotional intelligence and social skills of the people you know by watching how they act around you. It's important to realize that people who frequently talk about other people may not only lack caution, but also be ready to use private information for their own gain. Because of this, sharing parts of your life with these kinds of people could put you at risk of becoming the target of their negative stories. When dealing with negative newsmongers, it's important to be careful because their negativity can make the environment toxic which can hurt relationships and break trust. When people think about why they are criticizing others, it helps them understand those people better and makes it easier for them to decide how close they want to be with those people. For your own safety, it's important to set clear limits with people who spread negative talk. To do this, you need to make it clear that you are committed to helpful conversation and good relationships and that you have no interest in taking part in chatter. By choosing not to participate in bad conversations, people can stop gossipers from using them as a subject 
which keeps the social dynamic healthy. In the end, the saying, you are known by the company you keep, is true when dealing with people who spread negative rumors. Checking out the character of the people you hang out with is an important part of staying honest and making sure that your relationships are based on trust and happiness instead of the damaging effects of constant criticism and talk. Number three, the seemingly friendly person. People who regularly put fame first might put their public image ahead of making real connections without meaning to. When you talk to these kinds of people, you should be careful because you might end up being just another face in their ever-growing group of friends, easy to replace as they try to keep a wide audience. The outwardly friendly often show a kindness and friendliness that, upon closer study, may reveal a lack of depth in their relationships. Because they want to be liked by everyone, they may contact with others for the sake of look rather than because they really want to make real bonds. People often put number over quality in relationships, which can make people feel like they are disposable because they are just one of many people trying to get the attention of someone who seems nice at first glance. It is important to understand that people who are constantly trying to fit in may see relationships as ways to boost their social standing instead of as ties based on shared support and understanding. When things are going this way, the need for constant approval and support takes precedence over the chance for real relationship. When getting to know someone who seems nice on the surface, you need to be careful because their outward warmth may hide the fact that they don't really care about other people. If you know the signs of superficiality, like focusing on looks, fame measures and social trends, you can get a good idea of what they value and why they do what they do. It's just as important to stay self-aware when working with people who seem nice at first glance. A more thoughtful approach to relationships is possible when people know what they need from ties and interactions that are real. It helps people figure out if they want to be more than just a passing acquaintance in someone's social circle or if they want to make deeper, more important ties. One important way to protect yourself is to set clear limits and standards when interacting with people who seem nice at first. Telling them you want real and deep connections sends the message that weak connections might not be enough. In this way, people can go through these relationships knowing more about the possible downsides and focus on the links that fit with their ideals and need for real contact. In conclusion, interacting with people who seem nice at first requires a more complex view. Even if they seem charming on the outside, it's important to think about how deep their ties are and whether their desire to be popular fits with your relationship values and standards. People can better handle these situations if they are careful and keep their focus on being themselves. This will help them understand their own needs and the possible limits of relationships that are based on wanting to be popular. 4. Talking in a pretense way. To keep the sincerity of your relationships, you need to be able to spot people who pretend to be interested in talks by replying with generalizations. In these situations, it's important to spot the small signs of dishonesty and put the value of your time and words first. There should be two-way traffic in exchanges since real involvement is a two-way street. In talks, the fake often shows up as someone who seems interested but actually responds in a general way that lacks depth or personal connection. If they are more concerned with keeping up appearances than with having a deep conversation about their feelings or ideas, this could be a subtle sign. In these scenarios, it's very important to value your own time and words. Being able to tell when a talk is unfairly biased against one side can help you handle relationships better. It's normal for talks to go up and down, but if you notice trends of fake interest or shallow engagement, you should know that the connection isn't real. 
it is a fair and self-respecting choice to stop talking to people who don't value your words. It lets you focus your energy on connections that help you really understand and connect with others. By doing this, you make room for important talks with people who are willing to participate, listen, and show respect for you. To deal with talks with the fake, you might want to say that you want more meaning and sincerity. Asking open-ended questions that invite thoughtful answers will help you foster greater authenticity in your conversation. This method can be used as a measuring test to see if the lack of involvement is a one-time thing or a trend that shows how they normally talk to people. You can make smart decisions about the relationships you build when you know that not everyone approaches talks with the same level of seriousness. By being aware of the fake in talks and taking steps to deal with or avoid them, you give yourself the power to spend time and energy on connections that are in line with your values of being real and communicating in a meaningful way. 5. The person who doesn't feel empathy. People who don't have empathy may put themselves first without thinking about how their acts affect other people. It's important to be careful around these kinds of people because they don't understand or value the feelings of those around them, which can make relationships difficult. Empathy is an important part of human interactions because it helps people connect and understand each other. People who don't have empathy, on the other hand, may focus on their own wants and goals when they're with other people, not caring about their mental well-being. People who put personal gain ahead of other people's feelings can make the surroundings uncomfortable and full of distrust. When dealing with people who don't have empathy, it's important to carefully observe their actions and have fair expectations about their ability to understand other people's feelings. Figuring out the symptoms of a lack of empathy, like not really caring about other people's points of view or making decisions based on your own needs, is a big part of handling standards in a relationship. When thinking about trusting someone, it's best to be careful. Setting clear limits and talking about what is expected of them in terms of empathy can help protect you from people who act without empathy and are only interested in themselves. It's important to be aware of the mental damage that interacting with people who lack empathy can do and to put your own emotional health first. A positive approach is to only trust people who show they understand and care about other people's feelings. Establishing links with people who show kindness can help you build better and more satisfying relationships. When you surround yourself with caring people, you're more likely to understand each other, get mental support, and work together to figure out how to deal with the complicated parts of human contact. To sum up, noticing and dealing with people who lack empathy requires a balanced approach of being careful, communicating clearly, and putting one's own mental health first. It is important to make relationships with people who act in a sensitive way, even if you know the limits of the relationship. This will create a more fulfilling and helpful social environment. The constant irritator is someone who constantly makes other people angry. This person may be using minor emotional manipulation techniques to get certain emotions. You need to be aware of these sneaky mind games be able to tell when someone is trying to trigger you quietly and take action to protect your mental health. The constant irritator acts in a way that is meant to make other people angry or annoyed. This kind of behavior can be caused by many things, like wanting to be in charge, getting attention, or trying to show who is boss in social situations. Recognizing these minor triggers is important for keeping your emotions in check and avoiding the bad effects that could happen to your mental health. Being aware of psychological games means getting very good at figuring out how you feel when certain things happen. People with this level of self-awareness can tell when someone is trying to get them to get angry or upset and can tell the difference between real arguments and attempts to get a response. 
To protect your emotional health when someone is constantly annoying you, you need to set clear boundaries, say what kind of behavior is okay in your interactions, and show that you are committed to keeping a healthy emotional environment. This could mean calmly sharing your feelings, stepping away from the things that are making you angry, or, if necessary, staying away from people who are constantly manipulative. It's important to know that giving in to constant anger can have long-term effects on mental health, such as making you more stressed out and less healthy generally. Getting help from friends and family or learning mindfulness methods can be very helpful in getting through these difficult situations without affecting your emotional stability. Also, encouraging open conversation about limits and standards in relationships is a good way to build respect for each other. People who are constantly annoying may be less likely to keep doing what they're doing if you are bold and sure of yourself. This can happen if you say what you need and push for a better, more peaceful relationship. As a conclusion, dealing with the ongoing irritant requires knowing yourself, setting limits, and taking strategic steps to protect your mental health. By being aware of and responding to these minor triggers, people can build stronger emotional foundations for better relationships and create an atmosphere that encourages open communication and mutual respect. We've already gone over a few things. Please leave a comment below this video with the lesson number and what you have learned so far if you found them useful and helpful. For the constant problem facer, dealing with people who are always having problems and often adding to their own problems requires the use of caution. Even though it's good to feel sorry for someone, it's important to remember that their ongoing problems may become a burden for those who interact with them. When dealing with people who are always finding problems, it's important to put your own needs first and be ready to step back if needed. The person who is always having problems seems to attract problems and challenges all the time, making their problems the center of their relationships with others. Everyone has problems sometimes, but if someone's problems keep happening, it could be because of the way they act, the choices they make, or the way they think. When dealing with people who are always having problems, it's best to be careful because their problems may go beyond the circumstances and include habits or choices that make their problems worse. While it's good to give support and understanding, it's important to be aware that these people may unintentionally put the blame for their problems on those around them. To put your own well-being first in relationships with people who are always giving you problems, you need to find a balance between kindness and self-preservation. Giving support is important, but it's also important to set clear limits and be honest about how their problems may affect your own mental and emotional health. Setting these limits creates a healthy environment that supports taking responsibility for oneself and improving oneself. You can protect yourself by being aware of your limited role in someone else's never-ending circle of troubles and being ready to step back if needed. This step could involve putting some space between you and them, rethinking how involved you want to be, or pushing them to get professional help if their problems need more help. People who always have problems may not want to change or get help from outside sources because they are stuck in old habits or aren't aware of them. It's great to help others, but it's also important to know when your own health is in danger and put your own emotional and mental health first in these situations. To sum up, dealing with relationships with people who are always a problem takes a fair and careful approach. People should show support and understanding, but they should also be aware of their own well-being, set clear limits, and be ready to step back if needed. Finding this fine line allows for the development of better relationships that promote a courage and responsibility without jeopardizing one's own mental and emotional health. The two-faced gossiper is someone who flatters you in public but spreads harmful stories about you behind your back. 
This kind of person can be very harmful. When this happens, being honest and having ethics become very important, and you should really think about ending relationships that make your peace and general health worse. The double-faced gossiper acts like a friend or group member and says nice things about you when they're with you. But when you're not around, they show what kind of person they really are by spreading hurtful tales or bad stories about you. This kind of behavior is not only dishonest, but it can also be hurtful to your feelings, destroying trust and making real connections impossible. To put honesty and ethics first, you have to see that the two-faced gossiper's words and deeds don't match up. People can build relationships based on trust and openness if they value sincerity. It is important to stay alert and wise, knowing that a two-faced gossiper's words of friendship may not always match up with what they really want. Getting away from situations where this kind of dishonesty is present is a sensible way to protect oneself. In the worst cases, this could mean rethinking how much trust to put in the person, setting better limits, or ending the relationship completely. Protecting your peace of mind and general health is a good reason to put personal growth first and spend time with people who value honesty and real connection. When dealing with relationships with double-dealing gossipers, it's important to be clear about what you expect and what your limits are. Making a promise to be honest and treat each other with respect sets the stage for better encounters. Even though it might be hard to face the problem head-on, talking about trust and communication issues can either solve the problem or help everyone understand what's going on in the relationship better. Finally, spotting and dealing with relationships with dishonest gossipers needs a dedication to being honest and having integrity. People can handle these complicated situations with self-respect and build a social group based on real relationships and mutual respect by putting an emphasis on sincerity, setting clear limits and putting their own well-being first. The poisonous person, trusting toxic people, can be very bad for your relationships and mental health. It is important to be aware of negative people and take steps to avoid them because people with bad traits can make the environment harmful. Creating a better setting means consciously making relationships that are good for you and your mental and emotional health. People who are toxic have patterns of behavior that can hurt both their own relationships and the relationships of others. Some of these behaviors are controlling others, criticizing all the time, having unstable emotions, or always having a bad attitude that shows in all encounters. Putting your trust in these kinds of people can cause mental pain, low self-esteem, and a general negative effect on relationships. To spot poisonous traits in someone, you need to be very aware of how they affect your mental and emotional health. It takes recognizing the bad habits, figuring out how they affect your life, and realizing that staying close to these people may hurt your general happiness and satisfaction. Staying away from negative people is a self-protective action that puts your mental and emotional health first. Setting clear limits, limited contacts, or, in the worst cases, ending ties with dangerous people may be ways to do this. Setting and talking about these limits is an important part of making a place that encourages happiness and personal growth. Forming healthier relationships with people who make your life better is necessary for making your surroundings healthy. This entails hanging out with people who share your values, offer encouragement and inspire courage in your personal growth. Building trusting, respectful and mutually beneficial relationships is the first step toward a more satisfying and helpful social network. Self-care becomes very important when you're in interactions with bad people. This means putting tasks and habits that improve mental and emotional health at the top of the list. 
getting help from friends, family, or professional tools can help you break free from unhealthy relationships and start living a better life. To sum up, identifying and dealing with partnerships with dangerous people needs a purposeful and deliberate approach. People can make an environment that supports positive growth and leads to a more rewarding and emotionally enjoyable life by putting their own well-being first, having clear limits and making connections that are beneficial. Have you ever been amazed by the quiet people in the room? People who don't fill the space with words, but instead choose to say a lot with their silence and calm, so when they do speak, their words matter. It's like they figured out how to live a good life, doesn't it? Hold on tight, because today we're going to solve that mystery together. You're about to find out what makes these quiet fighters unique, and it's not just that they're strong and quiet like in movies. Stoicism, a greater principle that has shaped leaders, thinkers and learners for hundreds of years, is at the center of it all. In this part, we'll talk about how the quiet practice of speaking less can actually make your life better. You've come to the right place if you want to know how talking less can actually mean more or how silence can be your greatest response. Come with me as we look at how these timeless traits can change our busy world one quiet moment at a time. 1. When you're quiet, your opponent gets confused. You're like a tree standing strong in a storm when you choose silence. You hold up a mirror to the world and let other people show who they are. It's about learning how to be still so that other people's worries and feelings can paint themselves on your silence. Stopping isn't the point. It's a deliberate embracing of calm, a lesson from the Stoics that shows us the power of being calm, clear and unfazed like water. Lao once said, silence is a source of great strength. Imagine being able to tap into your inner Stoic and grow your wisdom while chaos tries to break your peace. When people talk, they usually throw words at each other like darts, hoping one will hit the target. This quiet plan breaks up that dance. Instead, your silence acts as a shield, blocking the darts and making the person who threw them confused about what to do next. At that moment, you're not only listening, but also watching how your calm can make waves of doubt. You're learning, making plans, and staying one step ahead here in the quiet. Your silence tells everyone that you move with purpose and not just because you feel like it. Accepting silence is a path that gives you power and it fits with the stoic virtues of moderation and knowledge. We learn to respect what isn't said, to find power in quiet, and to see clearly when things are calm. This stern silence isn't a blank. It's a place full of possibilities where you can carefully watch, think, and choose your way. In that case, use silence as a plan and a strength. Find your voice in the quiet and let it lead you with the knowledge of the past. Remember that there is power in silence that words can't match. Two, get rid of things that are distracting you. As we go through our days surrounded by noise, it's important to remember the strength in silence and speaking less. This isn't about keeping your voice down, it's about making it more valuable. Socrates, like Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus, were very smart people who knew how important it was to think before speaking. In their minds, silence wasn't a void, but a blank page for thought and a chance to find peace and understanding within. Today's trip brings this old knowledge back to us telling us to get rid of all the things that are distracting us and find a greater relationship with ourselves and the world around us in the quiet. In light of this, why is this way of speaking less important in today's fast-paced world? The answer lies in how well we get along with each other. Every sentence you write has the power to either strengthen or weaken, to reveal or hide. When you choose silence over talk, you give your words room to breathe 
which helps them hit people more deeply. Thinking about what you say shows that you respect yourself, the person you're talking to, and the message you're sending. As a somber warning, power is often found in things that are simple, in the places between words where connection and understanding grow. But how do we develop this trait when everything around us demands our attention all the time? Starting with choosing to enjoy times of silence throughout your day is the first step. This could mean taking a moment to fully understand what someone is saying before reacting, or it could mean setting aside time every day to unplug from the noise of technology. In these quiet times, we can see things more clearly, think about what we want to say, and make it stronger. This practice of silence, or speaking less, pushes us to value quality over amount, or noise over silence. I welcome you to start this path of silent practice. Pay attention to how accepting silence changes the way you talk, interact with others, and think about the world. Your words will carry more weight, your thoughts will be clearer, and your relationships will be more in-depth if you speak less. Not only do we need to talk less, but we also need to communicate better and live with meaning. In the wise words of our Stoic guides, let us find the courage to go where there is silence so that our words can become more true and important. Let this be the path to a more focused, peaceful and worthwhile life. Third, silence makes people pay attention. People often forget that silence has a powerful effect on how people talk to each other as if it were the calm before the storm or the pause between beats in an exciting drum solo. It's not enough to just be quiet. You need to learn how to use silence to communicate more clearly. Imagine a place where everyone is running to say something and you are the only one who is calm, controlled and quiet. People are drawn to your confidence, which makes them wonder what's on your mind, not because you're withdrawing. This interest gives you an edge that can't be seen, a subtle control over how people interact with each other, similar to the stoic belief in the power of self-control and careful action. To go deeper, think of silence as a blank wall where other people can write their feelings and thoughts. It means giving thoughts room to grow, both in your mind and in the real world. You're not idle when you choose to listen instead of react. You're actively trying to see things from someone else's point of view. Deeply rooted in Stoic philosophy, this act of kindness makes relationships stronger and helps us understand others better. The way we talk to each other in our relationships, at work, and even in our own heads, can be changed by this powerful tool. Let's change gears and think about how this strategy of silence can help us make a bigger difference when we do speak up. Through speaking less but with more meaning, Stoicism shows us that quality is more important than number. We mean every word we say, and they all have meaning and emotion. Finding the right mix between silence and speech is important so that our words have more of an effect because of what they mean, not how loud they are. This method doesn't just improve the way we talk to each other, it also improves the way we connect with each other, making them deeper and more important. Accepting silence is an art form and a choice that people make in our busy, noisy world. Once we get good at it, it can bring peace, power and depth to our lives. It's not about avoiding talk. It's about making it better by using silence to get to know others better, strengthen our relationships and get our points across clearly. Finding the power of stopping is the journey. It's an ode to the timeless knowledge of Stoicism, which tells us that being still is strong and listening is a virtue, because silence makes you stronger in a world where people talk all the time. Not the number of words they say, but the weight of their silence is what some people use to command a room. Such people have learned the skill of speaking less which is a trait that has deep roots in Stoic philosophy. The virtues of reflection and inner calm that grow in silence are taught by Stoicism. 
It's like getting water from a deep well. When we enjoy quiet times, we tap into our inner power. Silence isn't about not being there. It's about being present, giving our full attention to our thoughts, feelings, and intuitions. We find out what we really want and the way we want to live our lives during these quiet talks. You could think of silence as a mind training coach. You can strengthen your mental resilience in the quiet, in the quiet, away from the noise of the world. Just as athletes build physical endurance and strength through hard training. Instead of just sitting there, you're deliberately making a wall of calm inside yourself. This refuge is where you can learn to deal with and make sense of your inner chaos, which will make you stronger and more stable. It's a practice that not only gets you ready for the trials of life, but it also makes you more focused on what's important. Now think about how clear things are when there is so much silence. Not only do you want to feel calm, but you also want to be able to make choices that are in line with your deepest values. When you do something after giving it a lot of thought, it has more meaning and aim. This thoughtful way of living changes more than just your own life. It changes how you connect with the world around you. Your words have more of an effect, your choices are more well thought out, and your appearance is more calm and powerful. In this way, silence isn't just a place to relax. It's a tool that changes how we interact with others and how we move through the world. What does it mean to listen more and talk less? It means having a deeper conversation with ourselves and the people and things around us. It's about using stoic advice to live a life of meaning by utilizing the power that comes from silence. Instead of making us shrink, this trip of quiet reflection gives us the clarity and calm we need to act with conviction and grace. When we accept the quiet, we become strong, logical and deeply moving like the ancient Stoics. Being free of pride or ego doesn't mean you're putting yourself down or not recognizing your skills. It means being able to see your skills and flaws without letting them make you feel better or worse about yourself. Imagine walking a straight line. On one end is vanity, where you think you're better than other people, and on the other is self-deprecation, where you don't think you're worth much. To stay in the middle, we need to keep our eyes on ourselves and remember that our accomplishments don't make us better than anyone else. This balance isn't just about being humble, it's also about the truth the truth of what it means to be human. Now, accepting this fact changes the way we act in the world. It changes the emphasis from speaking to listening, from claiming to understand to understanding. This kind of person doesn't talk less because they don't have anything to say, but because they know how important words are. Care was taken to pick them, and when they do speak, it adds value, not noise. People are drawn to this quiet strength, which leads to stronger relationships and respect for each other. In silence, we can say a lot more than we can with a thousand words. This way of living and talking doesn't happen all of a sudden. It starts with thinking about yourself, which is an important part of stoic practice. Looking at our reasons and biases on a regular basis helps us make sure that our actions are in line with our core values. When we admit our flaws and limits, we learn how to understand others the same way. It's not about finding flaws. This process is about becoming wiser and more caring. We find that our minds expand, our relationships get stronger, and our lives get fuller as we grow. Let's remember how powerful it is to take a step back and listen more than we speak as we go about our days. By practicing the stoic virtue of not being proud or cocky, we can create a life full of important interactions and real relationships. In this place, we can communicate honestly and learn not only how to speak, but also how to listen and talk with purpose. This is the way to a life with real meaning, balance and happiness. Not speaking during talks. 
When it comes to negotiating, let's talk about how powerful silence can be. For the wise Stoics of ancient times, it was like having a secret tool that still has a lot of power in today's fast-paced world. When used correctly, silence is more than just not hearing anything. It's a complete plan that can change the way any talk goes. You can think of it as the calm before the storm, which won't cause damage, but will bring insight, understanding, and finally closure. So why is it that someone who talks less, especially when negotiating, often ends up in a stronger position? It's not about keeping things secret for the sake of surprise. It's about making room for thought and for the dust to clear, which lets us see what's really important. Marcus Aurelius said, You have power over your mind, not over outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. In our case, Silence gives us control over the story, not by taking over the conversation, but by steering it with the steering wheel of careful thought. Being aware of yourself is the first step to using the power of silence. Know when the urge to talk is just a reaction and not an answer. It's like being in charge of a ship in a rough sea. The waves of talk may move back and forth, but your hand stays still. You choose when to speak up and when to maintain silence. This shows that we are sure of ourselves and that we respect the moment, the words that are still to be said, and the people we are talking to. It shows that we believe what we say should have value, have an effect, and when the time is right, change things. Let's keep in mind the strategic value of silence as we go about our daily lives. These tools are used to build bridges, not walls, and to open doors, not shut them. By choosing silence, we're not just negotiating. We're turning it into a conversation where respect and understanding are the most important things. So the next time you're in a talk, a deal, or any other exchange, think about how powerful stopping can be. It could be the most beautiful thing you ever say. Respect for others with kindness and care. People who care about others and have empathy are like secret weapons in our fast-paced, self-centered world. Stoicism shows us how important these virtues are. It is an old philosophy that is still relevant today. It shows us that being kind and caring about other people can change not only our relationships, but also how we see ourselves and the world around us. Stoic ideas from writers like Seneca stress how important it is to understand and care about others. Let's look into this more. Kindness means really thinking about how other people feel and what they think. It's more than just being nice. Stoics believe that all people are linked, and what we're doing is a deep act of kindness that shows this. Our goal isn't to hide our own ideas or feelings. It's to make room for a broader, more compassionate knowledge of the people around us. People notice when we do things like this, and it makes our interactions stronger by promoting respect and understanding between us. Now the question is how to use this old knowledge in our current lives. First, pay attention. Pay attention to how your words and deeds affect other people. Are you adding to the noise, or are you a calm and helpful person? Active listening is important. Pay full attention to the person who is talking. Not only should you listen to what they say, you should also try to figure out what they mean by what they say. This is a simple thing you can do to honor the speaker and the stoic practice of understanding and reasoned conversation. Think about the people around you and their stories and problems with the same care and respect that you would want for your own. This habit of reflection not only helps you understand and care about others more, but it also makes your relationship stronger. We need to look at the world through the eyes of others and see how we are all connected as people. According to Stoicism, every contact is a chance to show kindness and care, which will make our lives better and more linked. We can live up to the best of our Stoic history and bring out the best in ourselves and those around us by following these rules. 
learn how to listen deeply. People who talk less have learned the art of deep attention, which is easy to forget in the noise of everyday life. These people know something very important. Silence can be just as powerful and passionate as words. This way of thinking comes from the philosophy of Stoicism, which shows us the value of understanding, being wise, and finding strength in peace. They think that every talk is a treasure chest full of chances to learn and bond on a level that words alone can't reach. They don't see conversations as chances to say what they think, but as chances to really understand what someone else is thinking and feeling. Not only should people be quiet, they should also be involved without having to raise their voice. Think about how different it is when you listen, not just to answer, but also to understand and connect with the other person. Realizing that behind every word, there are many feelings, stories and lessons waiting to be found is at the heart of silent empathy. To practice deep attention, you need to be ready to see every encounter as a lesson in how to be a good person. It means clearing your mind of distractions so you can tune into someone else's experience and let their story emerge without rushing to add our own. This needs patience, which is a stoic virtue that teaches us to hold back the desir to talk and let silence speak for itself. Being patient when we listen brings us closer to knowledge because it lets us see things from points of view we might not have thought of if we were too busy planning our next line. But how do we grow this strong trait? To begin, accept the silence inside you. Get used to being alone when it's quiet, because that's when we can hear the little things that people are saying. Think about what Epictetus said. He said that because we have two ears and one mouth, we can listen twice as much as we talk. This old knowledge can help you become a shining example of compassion understanding and wisdom in a world that needs a lot more listeners and not so many speakers. This process of deep listening isn't just about making our relationships better or talking to people better. It can help you live a more calm and happy life. How to get wise. Through reflection, Going deep into our own feelings and thoughts can be like sailing a sea we haven't been on before. You'll need courage, interest and an open heart for this trip. What it means to practice Stoicism in the modern world is rooted in this study and this search for knowledge. It's about taking a break from a society that values noise and talk all the time to find meaning in silence and thought. It takes a lot of thoughtful knowledge to learn how to say less and know when to talk and when to listen. Understanding the power of words and the effects they can have is important, not just silence for the sake of silence. Think about when a friend tells you about a problem. You want to fill the silence with words or advice. Still, being there and being able to listen is often the best help we can give. This choice to listen instead of speak comes from a deep understanding of how people connect with each other. This shows that sometimes hearing someone is more important than being told what to do. This knowledge that knowing when to speak and when to hold back improves our relationships and our ability to connect on a deeper level. But how do we develop this kind of thoughtful knowledge and tongue discipline? Observing our own talking and silence habits is the first step. We have to ask ourselves, is what I'm about to say necessary? Is it nice? Will it be better than the silence? This process isn't about self-censorship. It's about making our interactions more deliberate. Through this practice, we learn to talk with purpose, pick our words carefully, and understand how important it is to listen. This path to reflective knowledge is both unique to each person and shared by all. It makes us think of the old Stoics who knew how important words were and how important silence was. If we choose to talk less and listen more, we honor their memory and make our own lives better. When we do these things, 
we become more aware of the world around us and more thoughtful in how we connect with others. It's not always easy to follow this road, but it's very worth it. It asks us to live with more meaning and depth and to feel more connected to each other and to ourselves. Strengths and Weaknesses Hitting the road of silence is like finding a lost gem that you have been ignoring because of all the noise in your life. This trip shows that people who speak less frequently have a deep strength, a kind of resilience that's rare but necessary in today's fast-paced world. Stoicism, a philosophy that has been around for longer than the stars, teaches us that this quiet resilience is not about ignoring our voice, but rather about knowing when and how to use it. It shows how important it is to listen, learn, and think before speaking. Comparable to the stoic practice of being in charge of your deeds and responses. Why do these quiet people hold our attention and earn our respect and admiration? This is because they show us the stoic virtue of discipline, which says that real knowledge isn't always found in how many words you use, but in how well you think them. Along with Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus, they know that words have meaning and that when we keep them to ourselves, the ones we do share have more value. This limited communication isn't a barrier. It's a technique that helps us think more deeply and react to the world around us more slowly. What can we do to bring this hardy resilience into our own lives? Being aware that silence is not a blank, but a place full of opportunities for growth and learning is the first step. When we welcome quiet times, we make room for the lessons that bad things can teach us, like how to answer with clarity and purpose instead of hurry. Similar to the stoic routines of thought, this practice teaches us to remain calm in the face of adversity, to look within for strength, and to view difficulties as chances to demonstrate our resilience as we deal with life's challenges. Not only meeting hardship is important for resilience, but also how we choose to interact with the world. The resilience of those who say less is a constant reminder that every word has the power to heal, inspire, and change something. It tells us to follow the stoic principles of virtue, acceptance, and perspective, which will lead us to a life with purpose, meaning, and unshakable strength. It was a bright morning when I found an old picture of myself buried in the pages of an old book. The smile, which seemed to be stuck in time, made me think about who I was and who I am now. Know thyself, as Socrates said, but how many of us really go on this deep journey? Even though 80% of people think they know themselves very well, only 20% really get to know the core of who they are. I want you to look inside yourself, past the social masks and standards. Today, what are you going to learn about yourself? Let's look into this more. Self-awareness. Have you ever thought about why, even when we are the main characters in our lives, we can feel lost when we face the bad guys? Today, we're going to talk about how self-awareness can help you find your way on this trip. Being aware of yourself is like having a plan when you're in a place you don't know. When you know yourself, you know both your skills and weaknesses. This means that problems can be turned into opportunities to grow. Imagine being able to tell the difference between when someone says something bad about you and when it's really about who they choose to be. This is not a way to cut yourself off from other people. It's a way to make connections with them deeper it's like when you go deep inside, you come out with a shield that can block out other people's negativity without letting it get inside you. And how do you get better at this art? By constantly thinking about it. Like breathing or drinking water, make it a habit. Every time something hard happens, ask yourself, what does this teach me about myself? This will help you avoid making bad decisions and also get rid of dangerous people. Take a look around. 
consider every contact a chance to improve your self-awareness. After all, the biggest win is beating yourself and reaching a state of peace and control that no one else can upset. Remember that every step you take toward self-awareness makes it easier for others to do the same. Forgiveness and memory. As we go through life, we face emotional forks in the road that shape not only who we are, but also who we will become. When we talk about forgiveness and remembering, we're in search of inner peace, a safe harbor in these rough seas. How then do we keep this fine line between forgetting and forgiving? Forgiving someone doesn't mean getting rid of the memories. It means changing how we relate to them. Think of yourself as an artist. Every event, good or bad, is like a rough piece of marble. We can make beauty out of pain when we forgive each other. That being said, remembering is what keeps us from cutting our fingers instead. Think about this. When we forgive, we make room in our hearts for new connections. These are healthy bonds that grow from a place of understanding and sensitivity. We built a fence around this garden, not to keep other people out, but to keep the young plants safe from storms in the past. Being strong is the most beautiful flower in this yard. It doesn't grow in spite of problems, it grows because of them. Remembering how cold it was in the winter makes us enjoy the sun in the spring. Relationships that have learned how to dance in the rain through memories of other storms are healthier than ones that don't have any problems. Remember that forgiving someone is like opening a door to the future. Remembering is like keeping the key. It's not about dwelling in the past, but rather about using its lessons to create a better future. To live well, you need to find a balance between the joy of forgiving and the smarts of remembering. Emotional stability. You need more than just the ability to swim to get through the rough waters of interacting with other people. Being around harmful people is like being in water with currents that will trick you. Emotional steadiness is important if you want to get through these rough seas without getting swept away. But how can someone stay calm and balanced in this tough situation? The answer comes in how powerful mindfulness is and how well stress can be managed. Think of your mind as a big ocean. The waves on the top are your feelings changing with the wind. There is, however, a place of deep, unwavering calm below this choppy surface. Being mindful is the dive that gets you there. When you practice it, you learn how to breathe through the waves and see the storm without getting caught up in it. Every moment of mindfulness helps you remember that you are not your feelings. You are the huge, constant sky that they pass through. You build mental resilience, an unseen barrier that bad people can't get through, by developing this awareness. Managing stress helps you find your way in this water. Deep breathing, positive thinking, and regular exercise are all techniques that can help us get back on track when outside forces try to throw us off. It's not easy to become emotionally stable, but it's incredibly freeing when you do. No matter how dark the night, it's like making an inner lantern that leads you back to calm. More than that, it's realizing that you have a huge amount of power to heal and be at peace inside you. To sum up, remember this. When you're around dangerous people, don't try to calm them down. Calm yourself down. The sea will calm down on its own. You can learn to travel with confidence and calm, regardless of the sea conditions, by learning mindfulness and stress management techniques. Setting limits. Have you noticed that we feel stressed out when we don't say no when we need to? Setting boundaries isn't just about making walls, though. It's also about making room for better relationships and real happiness. Think of your life as a garden. The lines between you and other people are like walls that keep your plants safe. Anyone can come in and step on the flowers without them. Do you agree? You decide who can come in and how they can use your space when you have these walls up. Have you ever been so tired because you couldn't say no? 
You're not weak because you're tired. It's just a sign that your limits are being tried. It takes courage to set limits and say, this is me and this is what I need to feel safe and respected. And you know what? Not only will this protect you, but it will also teach others to respect your space, which will help you build relationships based on respect. But how can you do this without coming off as cold or rigid? Getting the word out is key. Being honest about your limits is not a sign of ego, but of self-respect and awareness. I value our relationship and want it to be the best it can be for both of us, is what it means. This not only makes the ties stronger, but it also creates an atmosphere where everyone feels heard and respected. Now I want you to do something. You should think about your limits. Are they well defined? Doesn't have any yet? What's the first thing you can do today to start making them? Don't forget that every little thing you do helps you build better relationships and a safe personal place. So, let's start this process of self-awareness and respecting each other together. You may have thought about this before. Just like we charge our phones every day to make sure they work, we need to recharge our energy every day. Energy intelligence is the art of controlling your own energy in a way that affects not only yourself, but also those around you, making a calm environment and encouraging healthy behaviors. I'm not just talking about getting enough sleep or going on trips. As an example, think about meditation. Meditation is much more than just a quiet moment. It is a strong way to reset your mind and body, getting in touch with your center and creating good energy. Have you ever thought about how a short meditation lesson can change your day, making it calmer and more productive? Also, what about food? We choose good fuel for our cars to make them run better, and the food we eat can be the fuel we need to get the most out of our energy. A healthy, well-balanced diet full of nutrients not only feeds the body but also the mind, which has a direct effect on our ability to stay calm and make smart choices. But here's a thought. Controlling your energy isn't just about doing things on your own. It's also about knowing how your energy affects other people and how you can make the world a better place. Have you ever noticed that someone who is calm and in control can make the whole room feel better? That is what energy intelligence can do. Now I want you to think about how you're using your energy. You need to feed your mind and body to face the difficulties of normal life. Are you doing that? Remember that adding small things like meditation and careful eating to your daily life can have a big effect. So, are you ready to start smartly refilling your energy and making the world a better place? Focus on goals. One skill that stands out as essential on our daily path to success and personal satisfaction is the ability to keep our eyes on our goals. Believe me, it's not enough to just have a list of goals. We need to have the inner strength to stay on track, especially when things go wrong or when people try to move us off track, whether they mean to or not. This is where our real strength, emotional intelligence, comes in. People who are emotionally intelligent can quickly spot harmful effects and take steps to protect themselves. They know that the things around them can either motivate them or demotivate them. How do they do that? First, by developing self-awareness and understanding how their feelings affect what they do. Because they understand so much, they can stay calm and clear even when bad things are going on around them. Another important part of emotional intelligence is empathy, which helps people understand why other people do the things they do without letting those things upset their own emotional balance. Instead of getting caught up in other people's problems, these people use empathy to keep their own problems in check and keep moving toward their goals. But how does this work in real life? Simply put, let's. Think of your goal as a lighthouse on the sky. The waves and storms along the way are the things that will confuse you and the bad people that will come your way. 
Emotional intelligence is like an internal guide that helps you stay on course even when things get rough. You can do this by changing the sales, your actions, and your response. Now I want you to think about what lights you are looking for. How did the waves try to get you to go in the wrong direction? And most importantly, how can you change your sales to keep your eyes on what's important? Remember that success and happiness aren't just about reaching your goals. They're also about the trip you take to get there, dealing with and getting past problems with emotional intelligence and resilience. Don't lose focus, keep your energy safe, and keep going. Your real power is inside you. When we look for help on our way through life, we run into rocks that look like they can't be climbed. Problems and challenges test our strength, but we all need help, no matter how much we think we can handle them on our own. When we share our journey with friends, family or professionals who can help, comfort or give us a different point of view, it makes it lighter and more important. Picture yourself in a maze by yourself. As you look for a way out, you keep going down roads that end in nothing. Let's say you have a drone that can fly over the maze and see it. That drone stands for the people who back you up. They show you a view that you can't see because you're stuck in the tunnel. Friends and family may not have all the answers, but just hearing and sharing experiences can help shed light on things and show you ways that you hadn't seen before. And when it comes to emotional or mental problems, the help of professionals can be just what we need to get through the thick, dark woods. When it comes to our thoughts, psychologists, therapists, and counselors are like seasoned explorers who know the best ways to get around and the most dangerous places to avoid. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It shows that you are strong. Realizing that we are social beings who are linked and that our ability to grow and get through tough times increases greatly when we are willing to accept help. Other people's ideas and experiences are like puzzle parts that, when put together, can help us finish the picture we're trying to make. Next time you're having a hard time, know that you don't have to do it by yourself. Talk about your problems with other people and let the different points of view and encouraging support from those around you help you find new ways to look at things and find answers. We are smarter, stronger, and able to do a lot more when we work together. Stop talking badly to yourself. That voice inside our heads that always seems to be ready to point out our flaws and fears. This kind of bad self-talk can get in the way of our health and growth as people. But if you know how to do it right, you can turn this enemy into a friend, which will help you feel better about yourself and lower your worry. First, let us talk about changing the way we think. Consider that each bad thought is like a dark cloud in your mind's sky. Changing the way you think about these things is like looking for the good in bad things. When we think, I can never get this right, we can change our story to, I'm facing challenges, but I'm learning and growing with each experience. This shift in our story not only takes the pressure off, but it also makes room for growth and learning. Mindfulness meditation is an additional effective method. This means being fully in the present moment and not judging our feelings and thoughts. Mindfulness enables us to take a step back and see our negative thoughts as fleeting clouds rather than as fixed facts when we are caught up in a storm of them. From this point of view, we can pick which thoughts are worth focusing on and which ones we can let go of. Also, expressing thanks is an underrated way to stop negative self-talk. Try to write down three things you're thankful for every day. Focusing on what's good in your life instead of what's missing can help you have a better attitude about yourself and the world around you. Finally, don't forget how important it is to be kind to yourself. There are times when we all feel doubt and fear, but being kind to ourselves like we would a friend can make a big difference. 
When you start to talk badly to yourself, ask yourself, would I say this to someone I love? If the answer is no, it's time to change the subject. Changing the way you talk to yourself negatively doesn't happen quickly, but you can turn your inner critic into a motivating guide with practice and time. Don't forget that every step you take in the right way is a reason to celebrate. A focus on finding solutions. Having an attitude focused on finding solutions can be very helpful in a world that often seems to be full of problems. This way of thinking doesn't dwell on problems and roadblocks. Instead, it aggressively seeks answers. This way of thinking not only makes us stronger when things go wrong, but it also gives us the tools to use the power of imagination, flexibility and teamwork. Think of yourself as a sailor who has to deal with rough seas. The big waves and strong winds are making it hard to stay on course. In this situation, taking a solution-focused approach is like changing the sails and the helm to make the wind work in your favor, turning problems into chances to move forward. On this trip, creativity is your compass. It helps you see beyond common answers and find new roads and opportunities where others see dead ends. Getting stuck in the way we've always done things is easy when we're having trouble. But being able to think outside the box is often how we find the answers we need. Being able to adapt is what keeps you going in a world that is always changing. It is very important to be able to change and adapt to new situations. This means being ready to learn, change, and sometimes accept that the first idea you have might not be the best one. Being adaptable means going with the flow of things as they change, not against them. Lastly, working together is what helps you find your way. A lot of problems are too hard to solve by one person. We can find better and more long-lasting answers if we work together and share our information, skills and points of view. Cooperation shows how important each person is and how we can do more working together than separately. Now I want you to think about it. When problems come up, do you first focus on the problems or look for ways to solve them? Remember that every problem is a chance to learn, grow and come up with new ideas. Always look for ways to solve problems. Be flexible and creative when you change your sales, and remember that we are stronger when we work together. In this way, there is no storm that can't be handled, keeping fights from being pointless. In the complicated world of human relationships, we can sometimes end up in pointless fights, especially with people whose presence seems to drain our energy rather than fill it. But there are things we can do that will help us stay calm during these storms, which will also help our relationships stay better. Starting with that, focused on what's the same instead of what's different, can help us stay calm. When we focus on what we share with others, we build a basis for understanding each other. This doesn't mean ignoring our differences or giving up our values. Instead, it means finding things we have in common so we can start talking about them in a healthy way. Remember that it's easier to fix things when we have a strong base. Another important skill is knowing when to pull back. You don't have to spend time and energy on every fight. It's important to know how to tell when a talk is going in the wrong direction. If you think the conversation isn't going to lead to anything useful, step back politely. This doesn't mean you've lost. It means you're emotionally smart and trying to protect yourself. There is a saying that says, pick your battles. This is a great example of that. Questioning instead of making comments is also a great way to ease emotions. Instead of provoking conflict, questions support thought and discussion. You could say, you are wrong, but instead ask, can you explain your point of view better to me? This shows that you are willing to understand the other side and can turn a fight into a valuable exchange of ideas. Along with these tactics, 
It's always good to remember that everyone has their own problems and points of view and to be patient and empathetic. Putting ourselves in the other person's shoes, even if we don't agree, can help us understand them better in a way that goes beyond our short-term differences. It takes skill and care to get along with other people, but if we have the right tools, we can escape many of the problems that come up. Remember that real strength comes from being able to stay calm and clear, even when things are going crazy. Find out about fake friendliness. Finding signs of fake friendliness is like figuring out a secret code in the huge world of how people connect with each other. Being able to tell the difference between someone being nice and having ulterior motives can keep you safe from tricks and help you build more genuine and important relationships. To help you figure out this code, here are some tools. Body language can show you what someone really wants. Some behaviors, like smiling so big it hurts your eyes, keeping your eyes closed, or avoiding eye contact, can show that the friendliness being shown isn't really there. Think about the difference between a real smile that makes your whole face light up and often involves your whole body, and a fake smile that only covers your lips. If you learn to read these signs, they can tell you a lot about how the exchange really is. Voice tone can also tell you a lot. A friendly, welcoming and steady tone of voice is often a sign of genuine friendliness. True friendliness, on the other hand, can be shown by a tone that is too sweet for the situation or quick changes in tone that don't fit with the natural flow of the talk. Pay close attention to how well the words and the way they are said match up. Another important sign is behavior that doesn't change. People who are sincere tend to be steady in what they do and how they treat others, regardless of the circumstances. If someone's friendliness changes a lot or seems to depend on who is around or what they can get out of the interaction, this could be a red flag. Last but not least, trust your gut. Most of the time, we know instinctively when something is wrong. Pay attention to your gut if you feel uneasy or think that someone's friendliness isn't real. They come from your subconscious mind, picking up on details that your aware mind might not notice right away. To protect yourself from fake friendliness, you shouldn't close yourself off to new relationships. Instead, you should be open to more real and important connections. By getting better at figuring out what other people are trying to say, you make it easier to deal with the complicated world of human interactions, creating a space where people are honest and value each other. In a storm of false demands, we often don't see that we are caught up in it, which makes joy and happiness fragile. Even our tightest relationships can cause us a lot of stress and deep sadness from time to time. You may be on the verge of a big event, like a painful breakup even though the love hasn't failed yet, or you may be stuck in a bad workplace that is destroying your personal life. Or even you could be involved in family arguments where different points of view and ways of thinking can't be solved. At Tim's like these, you might wonder if there is a key that will let you into inner peace. The answer can be found in the philosophy of self-discipline, where the idea of separation shines like a beacon in the dark, leading to peace. Detachment is not a way to be indifferent. It's an important journey that lets us live beautifully in each moment without being controlled by what will happen. We'll now show you seven steps you can take to separate yourself from your circumstances and use that distance as a tool to get through tough times at work, in relationships and in everyday life. First thing you need to do is set limits for your feelings. In this crazy world, Learning how to control our feelings is a valuable lesson that helps us stay safe and protect the relationships we value. If we want to actively control our feelings, we don't have to ignore them. Instead, we can accept them and control them in the light of reason. By taking the time to understand our feelings, 
we not only find out why we behave the way we do, but we also learn how to handle them in a smart way. It takes time and self-control to be able to tell when your feelings are getting the best of you and choose not to let them run your life. At times, getting your problems solved is the most important thing you can do, both for your own mental health and to help other people more. This is not selfish behavior, it's self-care. During the COVID-19 outbreak, we learned important lessons about how to love and care for ourselves. It's clear from the outbreak that mental health needs to be just as important as physical health. Self-care doesn't just mean eating right and working out, it also means taking care of your soul by doing things you enjoy, taking time to rest and setting healthy limits in your relationships. By doing this, we can make a space that helps people grow and also helps others in a deeper way. Respecting each other's room and limits is also a form of love in a relationship. We not only help people feel accepted and valued when we give them the opportunity to easily communicate and grow, but we also give them the courage to be independent and confident. For a good friendship to grow, each person must have the chance to reach their full potential while also supporting the other person. It's not always rude to refuse to listen or help someone. Sometimes it's the smartest thing to do to protect our mental health and make sure that when we return, we can really help them the most. Setting limits on our feelings is more important than ever right now. This helps us stay grounded and not let outside pressure get to us. To sum up, setting emotional boundaries is not only a step toward individuality and freedom, but it can also be an example to those around you. As the world around us changes, learning to live fully and with meaning not only helps our mental health, but also makes the world a better place, inspiring others to do the same and be happy with their lives. Step 2. Talk to a reliable person. When we learn to separate ourselves from other people and the things going on around us, we may feel like we are facing a huge world by ourselves. When this happens, looking for connection and talking to a reliable friend about it can save our lives and help us see that we are not alone. So, step two, talking to someone you can trust, isn't just advice. It's a way to stay alive and find yourself again. Being honest about our worries, concerns, or even small joys with someone isn't just a way to find comfort or an answer. It's a powerful way to test and rethink our limits. Each story helps us build a strong wall around ourselves that keeps out bad feelings and bad events. Take the example of Max, who has been going through a lot of difficult situations lately because of problems with co-workers. Max was tired and off balance, and he was afraid that this would make it harder for him to keep the peace and stay away from tough situations. Max decided to get help, so he called Alex, a close friend who knew a lot about stoicism. Max told them about his problems and fears during their talk. Alex listened carefully and then shared his thoughts on how to stay calm during life's storms, stressing that every challenge is a chance to make you stronger in willpower and intelligence. Max learned from this talk that asking for and taking help doesn't go against the principles of stoicism. Instead, it's a healthy way to grow and improve yourself. Max felt inspired and got the strength to keep going on his journey with a calmer mind and a stronger soul. He reminded himself that being emotionally independent means connecting with others and sharing. Sharing with a reliable friend is like opening a new door, letting the light of love and understanding shine through. This lets go of the darkness of being alone and confused. In this way, we not only get further away from what we want to get away from, but we also remind ourselves of our worth and inner power. The main idea behind Stoic philosophy is not to run away from life, but to learn how to deal with it 
and get through it with calmness and drive. There are many people we know, but who do you really trust and share things with? Who is that person for you? What happened between you and them? You can tell us about your story in the space below. We can't wait to listen. Step 3. Think about why it makes sense to distance yourself. What you think about yourself is much more important than what other people think of you, said the great Stoic philosopher Seneca. This is not just advice. It is a core principle of Stoic philosophy that we must have the courage to put into practice as we try to separate ourselves from things and people that may annoy us. Keeping your space is a sensible thing to think about as a first step. If you live with family members who are constantly arguing and doubting your job choice, that would be awful. You get into fights with your parents, care less about what you do, and you always feel like you're being managed and uncomfortable. Keeping your space becomes very important when you're in this kind of situation. When you stay away from family fights and problems, you not only keep your mind clear, but you also keep your peace and balance. In addition to being good for the head, this helps you grow as a person. The time and energy you put into good relationships and activities outside of family can help and support your personal growth in a good way. You are protecting your mental health and giving yourself a place to relax and grow when you separate yourself from these people and settings. Instead of letting bad things happen around you take over, this helps you focus deeply and happily on your own goals and values. Keeping your space is not only a smart way to protect yourself, but it's also an important part of self-care and growth so you can live a happy, worthwhile life based on your values and goals. Let me say more about what it means to keep your space and what happens when you do so. When you think about it logically and choose to stay away from bad people or situations, you are making a good and healthy setting for yourself. This will not only keep your spirit clean and aware, but it will also increase your resilience and your understanding for others. Keeping your space from others also lets you freely express yourself and grow your skills, ideas and potential without worrying about what other people think or being controlled from the outside. If you learned something less about yourself through step three, leave a response and try to distance yourself. Step four, carefully think about what will happen if you pull away. It is suggested that you withdraw in step three, but step four forces you to think about what will happen if you do in fact quit. Not only is this an easy step, you also need to have a talk with yourself about the possible outcomes, which not everyone is willing to do. Know that everything you do and decide has a picture of effects that are made not only for you, but also for the people you connect with. Retreating isn't always a good way to heal. It can have effects you didn't expect. More importantly, never forget how powerful it is to connect with other people. When you choose to withdraw, it can hurt you and the people you connect with. Think carefully about what this choice will mean for you, from lost relationships to the loneliness that can hurt your spirit and soul. At this point, patience and knowledge become your constant friends. Stop, think, and think about all the options. Don't base your choices on short-lived feelings or instincts. Think with purpose and have the courage to take responsibility for your deeds. Let's think about this for a moment. Every time you retire, you may be getting farther away from the noise of the world, but you may also be getting farther away from the love of community. Putting up walls around yourself might help protect your inner castle, but it could also keep you from sharing experiences that make life more meaningful and enriching. Souls on their journey should remember that in the vast world of life, everything they do has an effect and everything they choose has a result. So, as you think about the edge of retreat, do so with the care that it requires. To understand, you have to get through the swirling thoughts and to face the results of your actions, you have to be determined. Isn't this an exciting trip where you learn about the useful lessons and information 
that Stoic philosophy has given you. If you want to help us spread the Stoic philosophy to even more people, please like and share this movie before we move on to step five. Fifth step, take a break from that person. Why does one need to take a break for a while? This is because people often get caught up in their feelings and quick responses when they are under a lot of stress and pressure, not giving themselves enough time to think clearly and quietly. We may lose the ability to see things clearly when our feelings get out of hand, which can make us act in ways that don't really reflect who we are and what we believe in. In this situation, it's important to create a brief gap, a place to rest and think. Let's say you and a close friend get into a heated fight because you have different ideas. You are both mad and everything you say and do makes things worse. When things are like this, keeping talking only makes things more confusing and hurts more. You decide to put some space between you and them so that you can both calm down and think about what's going on from a different angle. More importantly, thinking about how you responded could be the most important thing you do to make things better between you and them. For instance, once you and your close friend have gotten some space, you could go for a walk in the park by yourself and think about what really caused the fight. You know that some of your anger is caused by the stress and pressure at work and not just by what your friend did. When you meet again, you tell each other about what you've learned. Once you do that, you and your partner will find a new way to understand and value each other better. By giving ourselves space and time to think, we not only learn how to handle disagreements better, but we also increase our self-control and self-awareness, both of which are crucial components of a peaceful and positive life philosophy. Not only is this a lesson in self-control and patience, but it's also a way to learn more about yourself and the people around you. By taking this method, you not only solve the problem at hand, but you also lay the groundwork for future relationships that will be good and last. More importantly, the time apart makes you understand how important it is to appreciate and thank the people in your life. When you see someone again after a long time, you usually appreciate what you have more because you know how valuable an honest explanation, a warm hug, or just having someone there for you when things are tough are. Putting some distance between yourself and relationships or situations that are stressful is not only a good way to deal with stress and find solutions, but it is also an important step on the path of self-development and a chance to think about your values and priorities in life. If you learn how to build and use this space well, you can solve the problems at hand and also find new ways to grow as a person and make all of your interactions more peaceful. Before we get to step six, let's look at the story of Jack. Jack is a very smart software worker who is famous in the tech world for his groundbreaking work. After work every night, he would spend time on tech sites reading posts and answering questions from other users. He felt stressed out from having to be online and busy all the time though, which threw off the balance between work and life. As a result, Jack chose to do something important in the Stoic philosophy. This choice gave Jack a place to be alone and think about what was important in his life. It helped him work on himself and make decisions. Taking this break helped him be more creative and get better at programming, which was in line with his goal of living a useful, self-directed life. In this day and age of social media and information overload, any of us could go through what Jack did. We have to be online all the time to show that we exist and get people to notice us. Still, if we want to find a way out of situations like Jack's and be alone, step six will be the breakthrough that helps you break out of the shell you built for yourself and live with your true self. Sixth step. Take a break from social media. The virtue of finding peace within oneself rather than seeking praise from others was beautifully stated by Marcus Aurelius, a forerunner of Stoic philosophy. 
In this light, taking a break from social media is not an escape, but rather a recovering of our space from the constant less demands of approval from others. When we take a break from social media, we break free from the ties of competition and comparison that social media often creates. We remember how powerful the present moment is when we are away from the noise of technology. This exercise helps us live more honestly by letting us experience the world directly through our senses without any filters. Another well-known Stoic philosopher, Epictetus, said that the mind is like a field full of good things. Just like a yard needs careful care to keep bugs from taking over, our minds do best when they are fed and kept safe from the bad ideas and distractions that social media spreads. Taking a break from social media gives us the mental clarity and peace we need to tend to the yard of our souls and grow thoughts and actions that are in line with our true values and goals. We can rethink our lives during this time of reflection and focus on what really matters, personal growth, important relationships, and living a life in line with the stoic virtues. When we can separate ourselves from the chaos of the outside world, we find a deeper way to live by putting our inner peace first. The stoic ideal of living a meaningful, right and peaceful life guides us on this journey back to our true selves. When we step away from social media, the silence and quiet we feel are not empty areas, but rather places where we can grow and learn about ourselves. We find the peace we've been looking for in this quiet, not in a place full of noise and distractions, but in the holy space of ourselves. Are you ready to take a break from social media? What's your challenge? Tell me in the comments how many days you're going to stop using social media and show that you're serious about it. Say something like, I'm going to stop using social media for seven days. Make a promise to yourself and keep it. You will learn what real value Stoicism has for you. Step 7. Slowly and carefully think about your basic wants. As the last step, turn your attention from the outside world to yourself. Stoic philosophy says that this is where we can take charge of our minds, learn about our ideals and goals, and figure out what's important in our lives. Learning to separate ourselves from people and situations that aren't good for us anymore helps us avoid negative effects on the outside world. But it also starts an inner journey to meet our most basic needs, self-care. In this case, self-care doesn't just mean putting your physical health first by working out and eating right. It also means taking care of your mind and spirit by doing things that make you feel calm and clear. Finding happiness inside ourselves is a process of emotional self-reliance in which we learn to notice and control our feelings in a healthy way so that they don't control our state. Self-reflection every day is an important way to tell the difference between basic needs and short-term wants. It helps us figure out what really matters and gets our time and energy. We learn to tell the difference between what we can control and what we can't, which helps us put money into our own growth and improvement. The main goal is inner peace, which means we have to practice going back to our center and setting limits to protect our mental and emotional health. This not only helps us stay calm when life gets rough, but it also lets us say no to things that demand our attention and yes to things that make our lives better. Focusing on our basic wants gives us the chance to live a life that is in line with our beliefs and our life's purpose. Being urged to live honestly and with purpose, not relying on approval from others, but finding happiness in who we are and what we do. In this last step, letting go of what isn't important and accepting our real selves leads to a happy and worthwhile life. This is the core of Stoic philosophy. It gives us the strength to take care of our minds, think about our ideals and dreams, and figure out what's most important in our lives. We just finished a wonderful trip based on Stoic philosophy 
that taught us how to separate ourselves from relationships and situations that are no longer good for our growth. Not only is this a lesson in spiritual freedom, it's also a big step toward freedom and peace of mind. These times of thought can help us understand and accept ourselves better, which can help us see life in a new, more hopeful and stronger way. It can be hard to deal with other people. They might cheat or lie, and it seems like they're always trying to make things harder. But what do you know? Dealing with people, all kinds of people, is part of life's big test, states Stoicism. Alexander the Great, the Stoic philosopher king, tells us to be kind and patient with other people. He thought that our purpose in life was to connect with others, understand them, and work with them. How can we make sure that the tough parts of our nature don't get the best of us? If we want to not only deal with the people around us, but also really grow in them, this show is for you. These timeless stoic tips will help you deal with difficult situations and keep your cool when other people are making you mad. Learning how to deal with chows with ease and resilience is more important than trying to avoid it. We're going to talk about simple, everyday ways to not only deal with other people's quirks, but also get the most out of your relationships with them. People who follow Stoicism tend to have better and more satisfying lives, which I find very interesting. This old philosophy isn't just about how to deal with problems. It's also about how to find happiness and contentment in the midst of life's ups and downs. Focusing on these lessons is very important if you want to join this elite group. We're not just going on this trip to solve problems. It's also about changing the way you live your life and finding a greater level of happiness. Are you ready to deal with people issues in a stoic way? Take less notice of what other people think. Imagine that you are on a stage with lots of people looking at you. Your heart is racing because so many people are watching you. This is the speech you've worked so hard on, and it has a message that you really believe in. Not about the message you're sending, but about how it will be accepted. There's a voice in your head that won't go away. Are they going to like it? Will they look up to me? In this part of our daily lives, we often feel like we're on stage, wanting the praise and acceptance of people we may never meet. Because we want to please others, we feel like we're in a quiet tug of war between being ourselves and trying to please others. Marcus Aurelius talked about this struggle many years ago, telling us that trying to get fame after death or other people's approval is not connected to our truth or present. Mark Aurelius wrote in his meditations, We love ourselves more than other people, but we care more about what they think than what we think. This sentence shows how ironic it is that we value approval from others more than peace and happiness within ourselves. It's more like planting a yard than flipping a switch to go down this new road. You need to feed your confidence, water your sense of self-worth, and sometimes get rid of negative people. Every day will have times that test you, but each test gives you a choice. Ask yourself, am I living for other people or for myself? To stay strong, you need to know what you stand for and believe. To be honest, when the sun comes up through your window in the morning, it's like a promise of a new day and a sign that you'll meet a lot of different kinds of people. Yes, even the sneaky ones who bend the truth and enjoy other people's pain. It's like walking into a maze full of mirrors that show different people. You'll have these experiences, fits with our goals. It's like being in the calm center of a storm where everything else is crazy and scary. Now the question is, why does this matter? People today want things right away, so being patient makes you stand out like a star in the dark. It shows how strong and honest you are, and most importantly, how much you know that good things and real growth take time. It's not about letting people walk all over you, far from it. You need to know your worth and your path, and you need to be strong enough to stick to it even when everything else is moving quickly. 
It means giving people and events the time they need to show you their true selves. This lets you make choices that are right for now and the future. How do we begin? Start with yourself. Do not be in a hurry when someone cuts you off in traffic or when a friend talks too long. Let yourself breathe. You should remind yourself that right now is your chance to be patient and calm in a world that is always trying to upset you. Remember that these small, everyday things are what build character that is not only praised, but also truly respected. Your secret tool is patience. It's your quiet strength that says a lot about who you are and how much of an impact you can make on the world. Let's welcome it. Let's get good at it. Let's show the world how strong it is to be patient. 5. Set a good model. Let's say you're going down the street and not paying attention to anything when all of a sudden you see someone helping an old person carry their groceries. They sent a strong message that is at the heart of Stoicism. Actions speak louder than words. It's about being the kind of person whose easy actions inspire others. It's not enough to scream your views from the hills. You have to live them out so clearly that other people can't help but notice and be moved to do the same. Picture a wave going around. People around you can be inspired to be kind and wise just by seeing you live out the virtues you believe in. Being a model is more important than ever in this day and age when everything is all around us. It's simple to get lost in the noise and follow the crowd. But think about what would happen if you chose to be a source of power and happiness. By following the Stoic rules, you're not only making your own life better, you're also showing other people the way. Every decision you make to stay calm when things go wrong or to be kind when other people might not add value to your life and the lives of those around you. What should we do first? It starts with little decisions. Instead of talking, choose to listen. Be thankful for everything, even the little things and face problems with a calm heart. Keep in mind that being a Stoic isn't about being perfect, it's about getting better. It makes you a more valuable person in your group every time you live out your values. This will encourage other people to do the same, and when you do that, you'll be happier not from praise from other people, but from seeing the good changes you've made in the world. Let's keep going, ignore the haters, and pay attention to what's important. Sixth, shut up the haters. Let's get right to something that many of us can relate to. The noise, the bad vibes, and yes, the haters. You know those whispers that tell you you're not good enough, you can't do this, and you won't make it. Sometimes they're loud, and other times they're quiet. If you want to hear a secret from the Stoics that still works today, it's to tune them out. Imagine putting on an unseen shield that blocks out all the bad things that happen. Why? Because what counts most is what you do, what you choose, and how you act. You can focus on your way while listening to your favorite song through earbuds. The noise around you doesn't bother you. It's kind of like Cicero's joke about living as if he were in Plato's Republic instead of Romulus. The crooked and hopeless times he lived in didn't affect what he did. He ignored the trouble going on around him and focused on what was right. Take a look. When it looks like everything is going wrong and hope seems like a faraway memory, that's when you need to hold on to what's right. Not paying attention to or acting like the world's troubles don't exist is not the point. It's about being aware of what you can change, your honesty, your deeds, and how you handle problems. This isn't about being uncaring. It's about being focused on being the best version of yourself, care less of the storm happening around you. Marcus Aurelius said, just that you do the right thing, the rest doesn't matter. To use these stoic tactics successfully, we need to remember this important step, to tune out the haters, not with pride or lack of knowledge, but with a deep understanding that your value, your worth, isn't based on the chaos around you or other people's views. It depends on what you do, what you choose, 
and how much you want to do the right thing, even when it's hard. If you want to live like a Stoic in the 21st century, you should value yourself not for the praise or support you get, but for the character you show through your deeds, which speak better than words ever could. Let's keep going, ignore the haters, and pay attention to what's important. Seventh, love a lot. Have you ever noticed how some people make a room feel better just by walking in? They seem to have a vibe or energy that won't go away. That's what it means to be full of love. One doesn't have to wait for someone to notice them and give them the thumbs up. It means being the kind of person who sees other people and spreads happiness just by being themselves. Let's picture what would happen if we all decided to be kind and helpful. Things that would happen because of that. Stoic teacher Marcus Aurelius once said that doing good things will make you feel good. It's very easy but very strong. Spreading love and true care for others starts a chain reaction that affects many people. You become the person everyone wants to be with, not because you want praise, but because you give something valuable. Your love, time and understanding. Let's face it, things don't always go well in life. Sometimes it seems easier to close down than to open up when we're having a hard time. But this is where stoicism really shines. It develops our resilience and gives us the ability to love and care for others even more. In line with what Seneca said, every person we meet is a chance to be kind. So when you're down and the whole world seems to be against you, that's when you should lean in and love more deeply. You shouldn't ignore your feelings. Instead, you should use them to do good things that make you and those around you better. Being full of love isn't just a way to make other people feel important. It's also a way to improve your own life. It's about making friends and feeling like you're a part of something bigger than yourself. Love will come back to you when you least expect it, but when you need it the most. Take a lesson from the calm person. Pick to shine with love and kindness. You'll be surprised at how much more important you feel to yourself and to other people. As you go on this trip, you will find that your life is more united and full. You don't have to wait. You can begin your trip right now. If we're going to talk about love, why not share it? Please click the like button and share this with someone who needs a friendly lesson today. Let's love and appreciate each other even more. Eighth, don't compare yourself to other people. Let's say you're looking through your phone and going from one page to the next. You see pictures of people whose lives look great. We need to stop here. Comparation is the thief of joy, as Theodore Roosevelt said, and he was right. You're going to fail if you compare your behind the scenes to someone else's feature reel as if you were running a race and your eyes were turned sideways instead of forward. Going that fast is slowed down and you might trip over your own feet. Don't forget that you should only try to improve yourself compared to yesterday. We can use Marcus Aurelius's wise words to help us dig a little deeper. He asks us to think about how silly envy is. Why want someone else's life when you don't know what they're going through? It's simple to feel envious of the CEO's success and forget all the hard work they put in to get there. Instead, think about this. If you lost everything and changed into someone else, you might start to wish you had the life you have now. This change in point of view is a powerful tool. Making the most of what you have is more important than having the best of everything. Seneca made this point clear. Enough will never be enough for the person to whom enough is too little. Being content doesn't mean settling for less. It means loving what you already have. This stoic concept tells us to enjoy the present moment, even though the world is always telling us to want more. So take a moment to look inside and outside of yourself. What will give you worth is not comparing yourself to others, but being thankful and loving yourself. Let this be your guide as you go through life. 
You shouldn't judge yourself by how you compare to other people. Instead, you should judge yourself by how you grow and develop your own path. 9. Love the people you care about. If you said to yourself, I'll do it tomorrow, but you never did, have you ever put off calling or texting someone? That's a hard lesson for some of us to learn. Stoicism teaches us an important lesson. Remember, you will die. It's an old philosophy, but it's still useful today, just like your latest status update on social media. Do not forget that you are going to die. But it's not enough to remember that we will die. We also need to remember that everyone we care about is also running out of time. It would be crazy if we didn't tell someone we love, respect, or forgive them every day as if it were our last. What would make our connections so much more important? Please think about the last time you talked to someone you care about. Were you friendly when you broke up or did you say mean things together? The idea of stoicism tells us, don't go to bed angry. Life goes by so quickly. The next second, you wish you had one more moment to say what really mattered. The next minute you're planning a catch up over the weekend. It's not about living in fear, it's about living on purpose. To cherish your loved ones, you must live in the present. Forgive quickly, love deeply, and never miss a chance to tell them how much you care. Let's not get lost in the chaos of daily life. Instead, let's stop and think about who makes our lives more interesting. Tell them today that you value them, not tomorrow. Make it count, whether it's a quick text, a long overdue call, or a big hug. Remember that these small times of relationship are what mean most in the big picture of life. Let's not wait for a harsh warning of our own demise to start loving the people that are most important to us. Remember that we are going to die, but let that also make us want to live and love more with each breath. To sum up our trip through Stoic advice, remember that your power lies in how you think and what you do. This is especially true when it comes to managing the rough waters of human relationships. If what you learned today about Marcus Aurelius and the world of Stoicism has helped you deal with people better, why not mark this occasion? Click the like button to show that you're serious about the change you want to make. If you know someone who is going through the same problems, sharing this might give them the push they need. Let's talk about how to deal with problems without giving up, how to smile even when things are hard, how to be kind, how to keep your inner peace, how to inspire others, and how to make strong bonds, making your own way clear and sticking out by being yourself. But how can we start to make things better? Stay with us to learn how each choice and each step can help you become the best version of yourself. Part 1. Strong Steps Sometimes the less travelled road is full of weeds and unknowns. Taking firm steps is more than just a choice. It's a strong statement of who you are and where you want to go. Picture that you are at the beginning of your own story and are looking out into the distance. Your life is like a painting and every step you take is a stroke on it. However, what does it really mean to walk with firm and sure steps? It's not about not failing or getting rid of worries. If only it were that easy. It's about having the courage to keep going even when the road looks cloudy, the resilience with which you pick yourself up after falling, and the strength with which you shake off the dust. That's what it means to take strong steps when you walk. Think about the great success stories we look up to, they weren't written in a straight line or without any problems. They were made by going through hard times with chapters of persistence and blank pages full of drive. And you have that strength inside you, just like the heroes in those stories. But what does that mean for you in real life? When you're working on a tough project, you don't take a step back. Instead, you dive even deeper, driven by your passion and the vision of what you can accomplish. 
It happens when you choose to stay true to your ideals, even when things are hard. In this way, you shape reality instead of letting it shape you. And the best part? You're not walking by yourself when you take strong steps. People around you will be inspired by your journey to find their own paths and reach the sky. Every step you take lights the way for others. It's a positive circle of inspiration and drive. What are you going to do now? What part of your story are you about to write? Remember that taking strong steps while walking isn't just about getting where you're going. It's about enjoying the trip, facing challenges with courage, and being thankful for every small win. Now I want you to think about what parts of your life you can start walking more strongly. How can you get other people to do the same, which would have a good chain reaction? Walk with purpose, walk with determination, and most of all, know that every step is an important part of the amazing trip that is your life. Part 2. Put a smile on your face. When bad news and endless problems seem to be the only things that happen in the world, a smile on your face stands out as a sign of hope and humanity. It's more than just the shape of the mouth. It's a quiet bridge that connects minds, a language that people all over the world can understand without having to translate. When we smile, what does it really do? How can it change the world around us? Picture going into a tight room where words seem to float around in a cloud of doubt. Picture yourself giving someone a real smile. Take note of how the air changes in a way that seems almost magical. Invisible walls start to fall down, shoulders loosen up, and a tight space gives way to one of openness and welcome. That's the power of a smile that can't be beat. A smile is more than just a look on the face. It's a mirror of the soul and a sign that we choose to stay upbeat and strong even when things go wrong. It says, I am here and everything is okay. Choosing to smile not only makes us feel better, but it also has the amazing power to make other people feel better too. It's not just how we think about it. Scientists have found that smiling produces endorphins, which are chemicals that make us feel good. So, when we smile, we make our own day better as well as someone else's. But let's go even further. There is something special about a smile that can bring people together who used to be at odds with each other. A smile brings us together and reminds us that we are all people. It shows that deep down, we all want the same things. To be happy, to be accepted, and to connect with other people. That being said, why not make laughing your signature? Think about how much of an effect you can make and how much light you can leave behind by choosing to smile. When things are hard, a smile can be your shield. When things are good, it can be your party. Part 3. Heart Open On the stage of life, we all have a heart. That being said, it's more than just a beating heart. It's a chest full of secrets, wants, and unwritten stories. Now picture a heart that isn't just beating to stay alive, but also beating with an unmatched kindness and openness. Friends, that's having an open heart. When you have an open heart, you're not going through life by yourself. You're invited to a dance where the music is empathy and the steps are danced on the fine line between giving and getting. It's about taking down the defenses we've built to protect ourselves, which in a strange way makes us more alone. When we say open our hearts, we mean being kind to people we don't know, not just people we've met yet. It means seeing yourself in someone else's eyes and realizing that we all want the same thing, to be loved, understood, and respected. How do we do it though? In a world that often seems to shut its doors, how can we really live with an open heart? Though the answer is easy, it takes courage to give it. We have to be brave enough to share our stories, our battles, and our victories without worrying about what other people will think. We find our strongest strength in being open and vulnerable with other people. This is how we can truly connect with them. 
Now let's say we build bridges instead of walls, bridges that aren't made of bricks and stones, but of love, support and understanding. Magic happens in this safe space we make together, where fear turns into courage, loneliness into friendship, and differences are honored like the many colors in a big human morale. Also, don't think that having an open heart is a sign of weakness. It takes a lot of strength to do that. The courage to be vulnerable and still choose to be loving, kind, and see the best in others, even when they can't see it in themselves. How should we begin? First, we say hello, smile, and do something nice for each other. Little things that can change someone's life, even if they don't seem important at the time. It takes courage to say, I get it, I'm here for you, you're not alone. And maybe most importantly, it takes courage to say, I need you as much as you need me. Because an open heart is what makes us human in the end. We can make the world a place where everyone feels loved, understood, and respected because of it. Are you ready to live with an open heart? Chapter 4. Being Strong in Quiet Think of life as a huge ocean that is sometimes calm and peaceful, like the sky, and other times rough with storms that test the toughest pilots. There is a strong force at the center of this ocean that can't be seen, but is felt deeply by those who have it. That's what quiet strength is. Has it ever occurred to you why some people can handle problems that would normally make other people give up? How do they stay calm when everything around them seems to be going wrong? The key is this almost magical capacity for inner calm and resilience, even during life's most trying times. Being quiet and strong doesn't happen quickly. It takes time to learn more about ourselves, our ideals, and our views. We know we have a North Star, a set point inside us that guides us like a signal for lost ships, no matter how bad the storm is. This inner strength tells us what to do, helps us make choices, and keeps us steady. When was the last time you walked into a problem and thought you couldn't solve it? What did happen? Are you here now? This shows that you have a lot of strength inside you, which you may not fully understand yet, but is there. In many situations, quiet strength can be seen in the form of careful actions that show both courage and wisdom. Active listening that shows empathy and understanding without words and silent support that often speaks louder than any words of encouragement. Even though the world seems to be going crazy sometimes, it shows how to live with honor and security. It's a lesson that even when things go wrong, we can stay calm and keep going because we know we can handle anything. Now think about what you can do to change your life and the lives of those around you by developing and showing this quiet power. You become a rock of support, showing people that it is possible to stay calm during storms and come out better on the other side. So, let me ask you, what can you do today to start building your quiet strength? Maybe by taking some time to think and be thankful, or by choosing to look at the problems you face every day with a fresh mind that sees past them to the solutions and chances they present. Don't forget that we all have the power of quiet strength. It is up to you to get to it and let it shine. We not only find peace and resilience in our own lives, but we also encourage others to find the same power within themselves by doing so. Because of this, know that you have everything you need to face the storm with quiet strength. Because it will come, it always does. There are no waves or storms that can't be handled. In the end, it is this strength that defines us, that makes us who we are. People who can deal with any problem with calmness, knowledge, and most of all, peace. Chapter 5. Getting People to Act Imagine that you are one of those people who stands out, not because they are loud or trying to get attention, but because they have their own light, a glow that comes from inside them. 
This shine is actually your views and ideals coming out in the real world through the things you do every day. Yes, I'm talking about you. Your small acts of kindness, initiative and willingness to share what you know make me endlessly inspired. Now wait a minute. Have you ever thought about how a simple act of kindness can make a difference? How powerful a word of support can be? Or how powerful it can be to help someone who needs it? Every one of these acts, no matter how small they may seem, can make a big difference and inspire others to do the same. That's what it means to motivate people to act. But what does it really mean to be an example by what we do? When we live in this way, every choice we make and every action we take really shows what we believe in. In other words, our deeds speak for us about how much we care about, respect and love other people and the world we live in. Being an influence means that you are always asked to think about things. Do our acts match up with what we believe in? Are we setting the ideals we want to see in the world? The beauty of this asking is not just that it helps you look at yourself, but also that it can change you and inspire others to follow a similar road of change and happiness. Each of us has a part to play in this, no matter how big or small. That part might be what counts most, the goal and the effects it has on other people. Just a smile, some helpful help, or sharing what you know can make someone's day and make them want to do the same for other people. In this way, the chain gets stronger and longer. So why not be the person who makes the world a better place today? There's no need to wait for a big time or a great chance. Small steps, easy but meaningful actions are the first steps toward real change. Always remember that everything you do has the power to start a story, change a life, or even just one person's world. Finally, what makes us unique are not just the things we think or say, but also the things we do. Because of this, be a positive light and live by your beliefs. In this way, you will not only give your daily deeds more meaning, but you will also become the person you want to be. In the end, being inspired means living in a way that makes your deeds more important than what you say. Are you ready to be that spark today? Chapter 6 Real Connections in a World That's Always Moving Faster With so many shallow contacts, the important question arises, what does it really mean to make real connections? It seems simple, but when we dig deeper into this question, we find that sensitivity, shared understanding and support are the most important things. Imagine walking down a busy street where everyone you see is lost in their own thoughts. There is a lot of privacy out there. The chance to reach out to someone and do something nice for them might be the spark that starts a real relationship. Listening to understand, not just to answer. Taking an interest that goes beyond the surface. How to show thanks in a way that moves people. These are the pieces that bring people together. These real relationships are not just an extra part of our lives. They are what hold it all together. In ways that no solid structure could ever do, they make our support network stronger. They make our journey better by adding the bright colors of mutual care and understanding. But here's the real question. How do we build the ties we want so badly? Even though the answer is complicated, it all starts with one easy thing, being present. Giving someone our full attention can be very different in this age of computers and other interruptions. During a talk, it means putting down the phone and looking the person in the eye to show that you are there, not just in body, but also in spirit. And by showing thanks and appreciation, we mean letting the people in our lives know how important they are in real ways. A sincere thank you, a note of appreciation, or even a small action can make a big difference. They are the little seeds we plant that, over time, spring up into gardens of strong bonds. Here's something important to keep in mind. 
Making real relationships isn't always easy. Being open, ready to listen, and most of all, patient are all things that are needed. But the reward, oh, the payoff is better than any task. It's finding a safe place in another person, knowing that even when life gets crazy, there are people you can count on who see how valuable you are. So here's what we should do. Let's take a step towards someone today. It could be a family member, a friend, or even someone you don't know. Be interested, really listen, and say thank you. When it comes down to it, these real relationships are what make our lives truly great. Are you ready to start making those bridges? Chapter 7. The Light Within Amidst a world that sometimes seems dark, we all have something inside us that can light not only our own way, but also the way of those around us. Inside light is what we call this. But what does it really mean to have this light? How can we find it and make it shine bright like this? Think of yourself as a lamp. Every person has their own shape, color, and brightness. The energy and glow that come from inside, driven by desire, purpose, and presence, is the inner light. Someone can't give it to you or buy it from outside. This is an inner journey, a dedication to the very core of what makes us unique. Ever think about why some people seem to easily bring other people to them, or how some opportunities just seem to fall into their lap? How these people let their inner light shine may hold the key. They know what they're worth, do what they love, and have a reason for living. Then, their appearance inspires others and brings them people and chances that are in line with their core ideals. It's a journey of self-discovery to grow this light. Periods of silence and reflection are needed to ask ourselves, what really moves me? How do I make my heart beat faster? It's a challenge to go beyond what other people think you should be like and find the glow that only you have. Why does this light appear though? How does it shine for everyone to see? The first step is to accept that you are special and that no one else is exactly like you. Then, it's about feeding this light with relationships, hobbies, and events that are true to your core. And maybe most importantly, it's sharing that light not as someone looking for approval, but as someone who naturally brings light into the places they live. It's simple to get lost in the daily tasks, problems, and demands. Don't forget, though, that your inner light is a way to find your way through the dark. To not only live, but also thrive, you need to make a way that is lit by what is truly yours. Now I want you to think about how you can start today to polish that light. What little things can you do to make your life more like who you really are? Remember that letting your inner light shine is a trip, not a goal. Each moment of finding and brightness along the way is an important part of the journey. So be the light you want to see in the world. Don't be a bright star that scares people away. Be a soft flame that helps others find their own glow. Because when we shine together, everyone can see the way. Part 8 a unique brand. In our search for genuineness, there is a gem that isn't very secret, but is very valuable, the unique brand. To develop an identity that stands out so much that it explains your worth and the ideas that guide your every move, you need to do this. It's like leaving your mark on the world around you, not like writing a name on paper. The unique brand's heart beats to the beat of alignment which means that your views, deeds, and the way you show the world who you are all work together perfectly. The unique way you handle life's ups and downs makes you memorable, leaving behind echoes of your presence even when you're not there, like a song that stays in your head. People hear your brand as the song they hum without realizing it, thinking of you, your stories, and your view of the world. But how do we start this road toward being real and standing out? Self-awareness and being real are the keys to success. Imagine standing in front of a mirror, 
that shows more than just the surface of you. This mirror should be able to see into the darkest parts of your being. As you learn and accept more about yourself, each new thing you learn is a step toward your truest core. Because of this, creating your own brand is an adventure that needs honesty and courage. To do that, you have to ask yourself, what are the values that guide my inner compass? You can show your feelings not only through the words you use, but also through the things you do and how you act around other people. As you start to find answers to these questions, an interesting thing starts to happen. Your brand starts to get stronger, becoming a light that draws people who share your values and vision. The inner and outer are always talking to each other, and authenticity is not only the key to standing out, but also to making deeper, more important relationships. Chapter 9 The Power of Silence As the world is always noisy and words fly around like leaves in the wind, have you ever thought about how strong silence is? Yes, I'm talking about that powerful silence. It's not just the lack of sound. It's a presence, a choice that has meaning and purpose. When we choose silence, we're not just remaining quiet, we're showing control, which is a form of inner confidence that shouts as loudly as any word. It's a mistake to think that silence means we're weak or not doing anything. Instead, it shows how strong we are by showing that we know the importance of our words and choose when and how to share them with the world. But what does this help us with? For a moment, let's imagine that we don't answer right away to every question or insult. Instead, we give ourselves a moment of silence. It's not just a break. It's a place to listen and watch. In this silence, we find the most profound answers, ones that don't come quickly, but after much thought. When we choose silence, we also choose to act on purpose. If we speak loosely, every word we say would be meaningless. But if we choose carefully, every word we speak has meaning. Being quiet helps us notice and understand things better, so when we do talk, our words have more power and meaning. Think about very important people who changed the course of events. Most of the time, their power didn't come from how many words they used, but from knowing when to speak and when to be quiet. In some situations, they knew that silence could say louder than words. So, I want you to think about the place in your life that silence holds. Are you afraid of it? Or do you see it as a friend who can help you see things clearly and find peace? Remember that silence isn't a hole that needs to be quickly filled. It's a rich place full of options that invites us to go deeper into our souls and thoughts. As we get close to the end of this thought, I want to leave you with one last piece of advice. Take a moment of silence the next time you're in a rush or a place with a lot of noise. Take note of what it shows you and how it teaches you about the world. Maybe the silence will help you find the key to responding in a more important and powerful way. Friends, silence is strong not because we don't have anything to say, but because we wait until the right time to speak. And that decision, that power, is a source of unimaginable strength. Sometimes you might feel like everyone is ready to hit you. Around every corner, someone is ready to treat you badly, right? Just think about what would happen if the next time someone treated you badly, instead of getting angry, you reacted with such controlled calmness that you left feeling strong. Does it sound too good to be true? No, it's not. It shows stoicism in action. Today, we're going to learn a lot about stoicism, an old philosophy that's not just about putting up with pain or suffering in silence. It's also about using every problem, especially disrespect, as a chance to grow as a person. According to stoicism, our real power is not to change the world around us, but to control how we think, what we do, and how we feel. 
Here are 10 lessons from Stoicism that will change the way you deal with disrespect for good. These aren't just ideas. They're tried and true, life-changing methods that have helped countless people turn their feelings into answers and their problems into strengths. Stay tuned if you're sick of feeling like other people are making you feel bad and are ready to take charge of your own peace of mind. This video will not only help you understand Stoicism better, but it will also give you tools that can help you stay calm and dignified no matter what life throws at you. Accept these lessons and see how the disrespect of the world fades into nothingness against the rock of your peace. We should begin this path of change and strength together. If you get upset about something, have you ever realized that you couldn't do anything about it? The Stoics come up with a strong idea called the duality of control. It basically says that we have control over some things, but not over others. It may sound simple, but it has very important effects. Your first thought might be to get hurt, angry, or even seek payback when someone treats you badly. Stoicism, on the other hand, asks us to stop and consider, am I in control of this? We have no power over what other people do or think. It can be annoying, but once we understand this, we realize that getting mad at someone for being disrespectful is like trying to stop the rain from falling. It doesn't work and makes you tired. Stoicism instead tells us to pay attention to our own reactions, which we can manage. It's up to each of us how we understand and respond to rudeness. Adopting this Stoic concept gives you the strength to stay calm when someone treats you badly. It's not about hiding how you feel or acting like the disrespect doesn't bother you. You have to decide not to let outside events affect your inner peace. This takes time to happen we choose to do it over and over again because it's a habit. Let's say someone makes fun of you in front of your friends. Your first thought might be to feel ashamed or to fight back. Instead, what if you took a deep breath and told yourself that what they say can't hurt you unless you let it? Here is where you show that you are in charge by choosing not to let someone else's view bother you. Ask yourself, is this within my control? If it isn't, let it go the next time you experience disrespect and you'll be more likely to adopt this less rigid approach from Stoicism. Pay attention to the things you can change, like how you react, how you feel and what you do. This is what Stoic resilience is all about and the first thing you need to do to deal with disrespect with strength and pride. When you do this, you're not just reacting to life, you're reacting with grace and knowledge. That's a big change. This is one of the most important ideas in Stoic philosophy and a great way to deal with disrespect. Stoics believe that wisdom is more than just knowing a lot of facts. It also means using what you know in real life, especially when things are hard. We need to know the difference between what's important and what's not, and between what we can change and what we have to accept. Now, it's easy to let your anger, rage or hurt take over when someone treats you badly. These emotions can make it hard to think straight and cause us to act in ways that we later regret. But what if we could take a moment to stop, look at things more clearly and use the calm way of seeing things? We shouldn't ignore our feelings. Instead, we should try to understand them, ask ourselves questions about them, and choose how we want to let them affect us. Stoic advice tells us to ask ourselves important questions like, why does this disrespect bother me? Is it really important, or is my view of it making it seem more important than it is? What can I do to react in a way that fits with my morals and helps me feel better? We're not just reacting to outside factors when we do this reflective process. We're answering in a thoughtful, controlled way. We are also encouraged to see the bigger picture by this acceptance of knowledge. When you look at the big picture, disrespect is usually just a small problem. 
We know that our self-worth isn't based on what other people think or do when we use knowledge. We learn to separate our happiness and peace of mind from what other people think and instead rely on our own sense of right and wrong. Wisdom also helps us deal with other people in a way that shows understanding and kindness. When someone acts disrespectfully toward you, it can help to think about why they might be acting that way. This could be because they don't know any better, are scared, or are having their own problems. We're not trying to excuse their behavior, but we can change how we react to it, if we understand it. We don't have to react to rudeness with anger. Instead, we can show understanding, patience, or even polite aggression. These are all responses that keep our pride without making the situation worse. Stoic advice provides us with a guide for dealing with life's difficulties with ease and resilience. It gives us the power to choose how to respond, to act instead of react, and to make sure that our actions are in line with our deepest values. So, the next time someone treats you badly, remember the power of wisdom. Think, understand, and then react calmly and clearly. These are the ways we live by the Stoic principles, turning every situation into a chance to learn and grow. This lesson changes us in a big way because it's not just about controlling our responses. It means deciding to interact with others in a way that shows the best of who we are as people. Not only do we protect our own peace of mind when we react to disrespect with kindness, but we also make the world a better place to live by making people more understanding and caring. So, what does it mean to show kindness, especially when someone is being rude? It doesn't mean putting up with rude behavior or letting ourselves be hurt. Instead, it's about figuring out the pain or fear that's really behind the behavior. It means looking past the act of disrespect in the present moment to the person who is suffering behind it. People who follow Stoicism often stress how linked we all are and how everyone is doing what they think is right based on their own view. The way someone treats you badly shows what they don't understand or what they are weak at. To respond with kindness, you have to recognize this and understand that their behavior has more to do with their own problems than with you. But how do we train ourselves to have this kind of response? Empathy is the first step. You should try to think of what made them act so rudely. It's possible that they're having a bad day or are dealing with their own problems. This isn't about making excuses for their behavior. It's about understanding it, which can help us feel less angry and frustrated. Next, keep your pride and respect for yourself. Being compassionate doesn't mean being inactive or weak. It means making a choice to act in a way that fits with your values. In some situations, the most caring thing you can do is calmly set limits or say something nice. This can change the situation and maybe lead to more respectful contact. Finally, keep in mind that kindness means forgiving others, not because they deserve it, but because you deserve peace. Getting angry or resentful only hurts you. Pick to let go and move on. This doesn't mean forgetting or letting disrespectful behavior continue. It means getting rid of the weight of bad feelings. You show stoic virtue by dealing with life's problems in a good and honest way by showing kindness. When someone treats you badly, you turn it into a chance to be kind, understand, and forget, which not only helps you, but can also inspire others. So, the next time someone treats you badly, remember that you have the choice to show kindness. By doing so, you may raise the level of the exchange, not just yourself. The world is full of distractions, stresses, and quick responses all the time. Stoic mindfulness gives us a place to be calm and clear. But let's clear something up. Stoic mindfulness is more than just being present or aware. It means staying deeply connected to our reasonable mind, even when things are chaotic or rude. 
Stoic mindfulness means paying attention to our feelings and thoughts without responding to them right away. It's like seeing clouds go by in the sky. They're real, but you don't have to let them decide what the weather is like in your thoughts. When someone treats you badly, you might feel a lot of anger, hurt, or outrage at first. Stoic mindfulness tells you to be aware of your thoughts without letting them take over your mind, so that you can practice it. Stop for a moment when someone treats you badly. This break is important. It gives you time to think about how you want to answer, instead of letting your automatic responses take over. In this pause, think, why am I feeling this way? What part of this is within my control? How can I respond in a way that aligns with my values and virtues? This thoughtful method doesn't just calm you down in a hot moment. It also helps you learn more about yourself. Over time, you may even be able to change the trends you see in how you answer. You might find that some actions or words don't bother you as much as they used to. You might find that you're stronger and more stable than you thought. Stoic mindfulness isn't just a way to deal with rude people, though. It's a way of life that makes everything better. It helps you concentrate better, calms you down, and makes you value the present moment even more. It helps you live on purpose instead of by accident. That's a beautiful way to get around the world, right? Stoic mindfulness is an old technique that can help you deal with disrespect or any other difficult situation. Remember this the next time you run into trouble. You can keep your power and poise by watching your feelings and thoughts with clarity and distance. You don't have to worry about what other people think or what happens in the world. You control your own thoughts and deeds. That's the way of the Stoic, and you can take it right now. Accept it and use it, and see how it changes, how you react, the people you interact with, and your whole life. This lesson is all about turning problems into opportunities and turning what might seem like bad situations into lessons that help you grow as a person. Stoicism teaches us more than just how to deal with tough events. It also shows us how to use them to grow and get better. It's a challenge from life to grow as people and understand others better when we are disrespected at least for a moment, imagine that every time someone treats you badly, it's a test meant to help you grow. It's not meant to bring you down. Rather, it's meant to push you to go further, put your virtues into practice, and build your resilience. Here is the silent gym, where you can work out your emotional and mental skills. And like any other muscle, it gets stronger the more you work it. How then can we use these events to make us better people? First, by changing the way we look at things. We don't have to see disrespect as something that makes us less important. Instead, we can see it as something that helps us learn more about how people act, tests our patience, and improves our ability to answer wisely. From being a victim to being an empowered person, from responding to choosing, it's a change. Next, we can think about these events. Every time someone treats us badly, it can be like looking in a mirror and showing us things we need to work on. Perhaps it's our sensitivity, our pride, or our hopes. By looking at how we respond, we can learn more about ourselves and find ways to improve. Looking at problems as chances to grow also makes you more grateful, even during the tough times. Indeed, you should be thankful for every difficult event because it helps you grow and makes you stronger, more caring and smarter. And that's very important. Here's the great thing about it. As you grow through these things, you not only make your own life better, you also show others how to live. With ease and poise, you can deal with disrespect, which can inspire others and spread growth and optimism. When you accept this silent lesson, you're not just dealing with disrespect, you're going beyond it. You're changing problems into opportunities and every experience into a chance to learn and grow. In this way, 
You're not just getting through life, you're living in it. You use the problems that life gives you as fuel for your journey to become a better person. With each problem you solve, you not only become stronger, but also a role model for others to follow. Being able to see every event, even the hard ones, as a chance to grow is very powerful. So enjoy every moment, learn something from it, and watch as you and maybe even the world around you change for the better. This lesson is what it means to live a quiet life. When you have inner peace, you have a safe place inside you that stays calm no matter what is going on outside. Stoicism doesn't promise a life without problems or disrespect, but it does teach you how to stay calm and collected no matter what. So, how do we find and keep this inner peace, especially when we are disrespected or going through hard times? To start, we need to know that we can keep our inner peace. Someone can't take it away from us without our help. Even though it sounds easy, this is a deep truth that can change the way we live our lives. People who treat you badly are really just rattling the gates of your inner refuge. It's up to you whether you let that disruption in. Focusing on the present moment is an important stoic practice for keeping your mind at peace. The past is over and the future hasn't come yet. All we have now is the present. When we stay in the present, we're less likely to let past grudges or fears about the future get in the way of our ability to deal with disrespect. Another good habit is to regularly think about what you can control and what you can't. As we already talked about, this isn't just a one-time thought. It's something we do every day that helps us tell the difference between external events and our own reactions to them. By reminding ourselves that we have control over our thoughts and actions, we keep our inner peace from being upset by chaos in the outside world. Accepting others is also very important. This doesn't mean giving up or being passive. It means facing life as it is. That means sometimes letting go of the idea that some people will be rude and the world won't always work the way we want it to. We can save energy and stay calm when we accept these facts without fighting them. Lastly, practicing thanks can have a huge effect on our peace of mind. Focusing on what we're grateful for changes our view from one of lack and anger to one of wealth and thankfulness. If we can find something to be thankful for, even when things are hard, we stay in a good mood that helps us feel calm inside. Finding and keeping mental peace is a daily practice that you promise to yourself. It's about making decisions that are in line with stoic beliefs, responding in ways that keep you calm and facing life from a strong and balanced place. Remember that the more you follow these rules, the stronger your inner peace will be. This will make you a calm light in a world full of chaos. Take care of it, keep it safe, and let it be your steady guide through life's ups and downs. How do you set limits when you're stoic? It starts with figuring out what our core beliefs and ideas are and why they are important to us. Stoicism tells us to pay attention to our own actions and responses, which we can change and let go of outside events and other people's behavior, which we can't change. Stoic philosophy says that when we set limits, we should do so in a calm and logical way, based on knowing our own worth and accepting other people's freedom to be who they are. It's not about demand or control, it's about having respect for yourself and being clear about what you want and need. For example, if someone regularly wastes your time, a stoic limit might mean making it clear when you're available and sticking to it, not because you're mean or angry, but because you respect yourself and your time. It's important to stay calm and equanimous during these talks, though, to show that you follow stoic principles. Setting limits with stoic knowledge also means being ready to accept the results with respect, no matter what they are. Some people may not always respect your limits, and that's fine. Stoicism tells us to accept the things we can't change and choose to keep our own virtue and peace of mind. 
Using Stoic knowledge to set boundaries also means reflecting on yourself on a regular basis. Do your limits keep you from disturbing others and let you live the way you believe in? Are they adaptable enough to deal with new situations while still staying true to your core beliefs? This constant self-evaluation makes sure that your limits help your growth and well-being, which is in line with the patient desire of a good life. Even though the idea of forgiveness might seem to go against the stoic image of toughness and resilience, it's actually a deep statement of stoic strength. To practice stoically speaking forgiveness, you don't have to agree with hurtful acts or hide your feelings. It's about letting go of the grip that anger has on you for your own health and peace of mind. The calm way of forgiving comes from knowing how people work and what we can and can't control. People will act based on what they think, feel and have experienced even if a lot of these things are wrong or flawed. People often do bad things to us because they are misinformed or don't know any better. Realizing this can help us separate our feelings from what they do. What about this silent forgiveness? How do we use it in our everyday lives? Realizing that the anger or hurt we feel is our own reaction and that we have the power to let it go is the first step. Not right away. It may take time. You may need to tell yourself every day or even every moment that hanging on to anger does nothing good and hurts you more than the person you can't forgive. Also, silent acceptance means looking at the bigger view. It's about realizing that things aren't always great in life and that people often act in bad ways. Forgiving others brings you closer to the truth of being human which is that we all make mistakes and don't understand each other. Also, it's important to know the difference between forgetting and accepting. Forgiving someone the stoic way doesn't mean you forget the lesson you learned or put yourself back in a bad position. As we talked about in the last lesson, you can forgive someone and still choose to stay away from them or set limits. Don't forget that forgiving someone is a gift you give yourself. It means you're free from the bad feelings that hold you back from the present and the future, and it's the first step toward the peace and freedom that Stoicism offers. You may find that Stoic tolerance not only makes your problems go away, but it also opens your heart and mind, letting you enjoy life more clearly and joyfully. Stoicism does not promote silent acceptance or resignation as a means of happiness. Regardless of what's going on around you, it's about finding inner peace and satisfaction. Deep resilience and a strong loyalty to one's own beliefs and sense of self-worth are signs of this state. It takes a lot of strength to stay happy when people treat you badly. It means noticing the rudeness, realizing that it can only hurt your inner peace if you let it, and making the choice to stay calm and collected. In this case, refusing to let the disrespect bother your inner peace does not mean that you ignore or downplay the disrespect. So, how can we grow this happiness? It starts with realizing that our happiness and peace of mind rest on how we feel inside, not on what other people think or what happens in the outside world. Stoics believe that our responses to events, not the events themselves, are what make us unhappy. When you really understand this philosophy, you start to see disrespect and other problems in the outside world as chances to work on keeping your inner peace. Focusing on what you can change and letting go of what you can't is also very important. You can't change what other people do or say, but you can change how you react to them. Focusing on your answer and making sure it fits with your values and sense of self-respect makes you happy because you're living in line with your beliefs. Being grateful is also an important part of becoming satisfied. Focusing on the good things in your life and being grateful for what you have takes your mind off of the disrespectful things that are happening and puts it on all the good things that are happening around you. It's not about ignoring the bad, but about picking not to let it get in the way of the good. Regularly reflecting will help you get in touch with your true self 
and remind you of what you value and what you're worth. Disrespect can make us feel bad about ourselves, but if you have a strong sense of your own worth, other people's opinions don't affect you. This last lesson leads us to a radical stoic practice, changing how we see disrespectful actions by seeing them as indifference, which in stoic philosophy means things that don't affect our core well-being. This point of view doesn't lessen the effects of disrespect, but it gives us the tools to deal with them without losing our cool. To change our point of view in this way, we must first fully comprehend what indifference is. From the point of view of Stoicism, these are outside things or events that may make us feel something right away, but they can't change our moral character or our ability to live a good life. We realize that disrespect doesn't have to upset our inner peace or take away from our happiness when we look at it this way. But how can we really see things this way, especially when disrespect feels so personal and hurtful? It starts with choosing to think about our natural reactions. When someone treats us badly, we might feel hurt, angry or resentful. We can move our attention from outside triggers to inner stability, though by taking a moment to remember what really matters, our character, our actions and our reactions. Understanding how our perceptions affect how we feel is another important part. Stoicism tells us that the things that bother us are not the things themselves, but how we think about them. We can start to lessen the effect of someone else's words or deeds by questioning how we see them and why we've given them so much power. We can also develop this view by regularly reflecting and meditating, which make it easier for us to separate ourselves from outside opinions and conflicts. Visualizing situations where we might be treated badly and practicing how to respond calmly can also help us handle things better when they happen. Also, this shift in view isn't about hiding your feelings or acting like disrespect doesn't hurt. It means noticing those feelings and letting them go because we know they don't show who we really are or our ability to be happy. When you're feeling the weight of everyone else's demands and wanting to just shrug off the small stuff, have you ever found yourself lost in the endless scroll of social media? Or maybe you've wished you cared less about the small things that happen in our daily lives. You've finally found the right place. A group of smart people called the Stoics lived on Earth many centuries ago. Believe it or not, the principles they lived by hold the key to learning the art of choosing indifference in our fast-paced, hyper-connected world. It almost seems strange, doesn't it? How can lessons from a long time ago be so useful in a world where we get messages right away and can't get enough coffee? In a moment, I will share 12 stoic principles that are easy to understand but have powerful effects. Because these values are so strong, they might be the answer we need to thrive in the 21st century. With a stoic twist, Let's learn how to get good at not caring. Seneca's wise saying, it is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor, sums up this stoic principle perfectly. It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor. Picture yourself in a world where messages of consumerism are constantly coming at you. It's a world where the newest tools and clothes are seen as needs rather than treats. In this case, living a simpler life is seen as a bold way to gain power over oneself. It's about finding happiness in the little things, like the sound of leaves rustling, deep talks, and the satisfaction of your work, instead of the short-term pleasures of material things. This stoic concept isn't just about being thankful for what you have. It's also about seeing the beauty in the simple things in life. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, wealth consists not in having many things, but in having few wants. 
This quote fits well with the idea of accepting simplicity that is at the heart of Stoicism. What real wealth means needs to be rethought. In this case, true wealth means not having to worry about what you want all the time and being happy with what you have. This Stoic concept helps us stay focused in today's world, where there is a lot of pressure to live up to social expectations of happiness and success. We are encouraged to think about what we really need versus what we want and to tell the difference between real happiness and temporary pleasure. It says to be thankful for the little things in life, to stop and enjoy the beauty in the everyday, and to find happiness in the things that aren't material. You can be in line with the Stoic philosophy and start the path to personal freedom by choosing to live a simple life and be happy with what you have. To master the art of not caring, you need to know that it's not about not caring at all, but about choosing what really counts. This principle tells us to put our own happiness ahead of approval from other people, to find joy in simple things, and to live a genuine life. To sum up, Stoicism teaches us that adopting simplicity and happiness is a strong way to learn how to stop worrying about the small, temporary things in life. It's a lesson to enjoy the present, find happiness in the little things, and work on being happy no matter what happens in the outside world. It's not about not caring about anything, especially for guys between the ages of 30 and 65. Stoic philosophy says that learning the art of not caring is more about knowing and accepting fate. This idea, which comes from Epictetus's lessons, says that we shouldn't just accept everything that happens, but should instead be in tune with the natural flow of life. Epictetus famously said, Don't demand that things happen the way you wish, wish that they happen the way they do. This deep statement sums up Stoicism and its attitude to life's countless difficulties. Life is a complicated fabric that we weave from our actions and the way the world was made. Even when we try our hardest, things don't always turn out the way we want them to. But Stoicism teaches us not to let these changes defeat us. In its place, it promotes accepting what has happened. The most interesting stories start with plot turns that no one sees coming. Being Stoic doesn't mean giving up all of your wants or giving up on making good changes in your life. As an alternative, it encourages us to focus on what we can control and accept what we can't. This way of thinking greatly reduces worry and anxiety, especially those that come from not knowing what will happen or not wanting it to happen. Take the example of a carefully planned weekend camping trip where everything is taken care of, including clothes, food, and activities. But when you get there, the weather changes and it starts to rain hard, which could ruin your plans. This is where the stoic moment is. You don't give up when things go wrong. Instead, you change. When outdoor activities are switched to indoor ones, surprising people and events happen, turning what could have been a bad trip into an unforgettable adventure. This story is like life. It's full of shocks and changes you didn't see coming. What gives our lives value and depth is how we deal with these changes and how we learn and grow from them. Marcus Aurelius said, You have power over your mind, not over outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This quote fits with the idea of letting things happen as they may like a warning that our power is not in the things that happen in our lives, but in how we deal with them. To see how this applies to modern life, think about the problems you face every day, like a project at work that doesn't go as planned, a sudden health problem, or a sudden drop in your finances. The stoic way of looking at these things is not as problems, but as chances to learn and grow we can go through life with a sense of peace and resilience by focusing on the things we can change, such as our thoughts and actions. To sum up, this stoic principle 
that we should understand and accept fate is a strong way to learn how to not care. We learn to focus on the people we can affect, to accept that life is unpredictable, and to find joy and lessons in the strange. By doing this, we can not only live lives with less stress and worry, but also lives with more knowledge and experiences. These timeless principles, which are deeply rooted in Stoic philosophy, can help men deal with the challenges of modern life and develop a calm mind and a strong spirit. Stoicism stands out as a source of resilience in today's fast-paced world, where happiness and approval from others often seem to depend on the unpredictability of events. It teaches use the priceless virtue of self-reliance. This is a great time to remember what Marcus Aurelius said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This concept is a clear call to strengthen our inner strength so that our peace and happiness are not dependent on what happens in the outside world. Imagine that you are a business owner trying to make your way through the rough waters of market changes. This kind of situation often leads to fear and hopelessness. Having a stoic attitude, on the other hand, turns this problem into a chance to get stronger and grow. A stoic business would not let the ups and downs of market trends affect their decisions. Instead, they would believe in the power of being able to change and learn. Recalibrating methods, learning from how things are going, and most importantly, finding strength in the constant chase of persistence are all parts of this approach. This concept isn't just about getting through rough times, it's also about using them to grow as a person. It shows us that our real power doesn't come from outward signs of success or loss, but from how we handle them. Learning this lesson helps us understand that we can control our inner world, but not the outside world. Realizing this opens up a world of options where problems can be used to enhance resilience and knowledge. Now, let's look at the story of an experienced sailor. A skilled sailor doesn't curse the winds or waves during a storm. Instead, they change their sails, control the power of the storm, and use it to move their ship forward. In the same way, we can use the problems we face in life as chances to improve our inner power and continue our journey with peace and confidence. This stoic concept is basically a strong warning to build a strong wall of peace inside ourselves. It takes courage to separate our happiness and peace from the outside world and root them in the strength of our inner spirit. This gives us control over our minds and the strength to handle the ups and downs of life with a calm and strong spirit. In the end, it's clear what the lesson is. Value your own independence and inner power. Let's not let the chaos around us affect us. Instead, let's find comfort and strength in our ability to stay calm and flexible. This theory is not just an idea in philosophy. It is also a way to live a happy, healthy life. By taking this advice to heart, we can turn our problems into chances to grow which will lead to a life of peace, resilience, and great personal strength. In this digital age, looking for approval from other people has become an important part of our lives. With all the likes, shares, and comments on social media, it's easy to see how much we value ourselves. Still, this never-ending quest for less fame can distract us from what really counts. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, once said, Man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxieties about real problems. This profound insight shows how important it is to tell the difference between real worries and the stress we create for ourselves without needing to. Stoicism teaches us to find approval within ourselves by basing our sense of self-worth on our beliefs, deeds, and character. Self-awareness, making decisions on your own, and honest self-reflection 
are all encouraged by this philosophy. Take the example of a devoted scientist who, after months of hard work, posts their results on social media. In spite of what they thought would happen, the post doesn't get much response and even some bad comments. Stoic ideas can help you figure out what to do right now. The researcher can use stoic advice to keep their confidence up even though they aren't getting any praise or negative comments online. They can keep making important contributions to science without worrying about what other people think of them. Our lives are full of situations where this concept is important, not just on social media or at work. When we are criticized, ignored or even made fun of, we need to remember that how other people see us doesn't decide our true worth. We decide how much we're worth and we can build a strong sense of self that isn't easily changed by outside factors. Next, let's look at the life of Marcus Aurelius, who was ruler of Rome and a Stoic philosopher. Even though Aurelius had a lot of power and rank, he stuck to Stoic views. He wrote a lot about how important it is to focus on your own actions and decisions instead of trying to get other people's support or being afraid of what they might think. His works, especially meditations, have timeless advice on how to stay calm and independent when stresses from the outside world come your way. In conclusion, becoming self-empowered means learning how to stop thinking about what other people think. By following stoic ideas, we learn to value ourselves based on what we know inside, not on what other people say about us. A life of sincerity, resilience, and genuine satisfaction is what this road leads to. As we try to figure out how to live in this complicated world, let us remember that our worth comes from who we are and what we do, not from what other people think about us. If you accept this knowledge, you will find a calm and strong spirit inside you that can handle the ups and downs of life. Principle 5 Accepting that loss and rebirth are natural parts of life. As we go through life, we will always experience times of loss. It could be a simple thing like a favorite clothing, a special memory, or something very deep like the death of a loved one. A lot of the time, these things cause unbearable pain that makes us question what life is all about. Marcus Aurelius said it best, Loss is nothing but change, and change is nature's delight. This view is not only comforting, it changes us by showing us that loss is an important part of our progress and growth. Think of life as a huge environment with many connections. Everything has its own season, or time to come and go. Just like plants lose their leaves to make room for new growth, our lives are full of ends and starts that we have to deal with. Every ending in our lives is a chance to learn something new, and every new beginning is a chance to grow and change. Stoic philosophy teaches us to accept that life changes all the time, and to value the steady flow and motion of existence. Being able to deeply love and appreciate both the people around us and ourselves, and knowing that letting go when the time is right should be as natural and clear as accepting a new day. With a beloved motorbike that has accompanied you on no less than 10 trips, you are a die-hard sports fan. This bike is more than just a way to get around. It's a part of who you are. Then it's stolen one day. When you lose someone, it's shocking and makes you feel empty. But as time goes on, your view starts to change. You start to look at different choices like a more advanced bike that fits your needs and way of life better. Having this experience teaches you an important lesson about connection and how things don't last forever. You find happiness and satisfaction that don't depend on these outside things. Even though you didn't want to lose your bike at first, it's a new beginning in your life. It's a chance to learn, grow and change your attitude so that it's more positive and strong. We don't need to forget the past. We need to learn from it and move on with a clearer sense of what we want to achieve. 
Seneca, another great Stoic philosopher, said, Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. This reminds us that in the big picture of life, every loss is tied to the chance for new growth, and every ending is linked to the promise of a new beginning. Our resilience is strengthened, and our ability for joy and satisfaction is increased as we move through these stages. Life goes up and down, and what makes our trip unique is our ability to change, learn, and grow. This idea, which comes from Seneca's lessons, stresses how we are all linked in this huge world. Often mistakenly thought of as a philosophy only about self-mastery and resilience, Stoicism has knowledge that goes beyond the person and into the heart of our societies. Seneca's deep understanding tells us that our lives are not separate journeys, but journeys that we all share and are connected to spiritually. It is the right thing to do to put aside your own goals and work toward the greater good, as this concept says. This kind of selfless service is where the real core of Stoicism lies, in a balance between personal growth and the good of the group. Think about the time you helped your friend Mary with her gardens. What this easy act does goes beyond just helping physically. It shows compassion and group spirit. By telling stories and laughing with Mary while you work together, you're not only helping her with her job, but you're also building a better friendship and shared support. Even though this exchange seems small, it fits with the Stoic idea that every act of kindness, no matter how small, spreads good feelings throughout society. What is bad for the swarm is bad for the bee, Marcus Aurelius said one time. This image does a great job of capturing the heart of our fourth principle. We all do better when we help the people in our community, just like bees do better when they work for the good of their hive. When we all work together to help others, we produce a balance that is good for everyone. This stoic concept is more important than ever in today's world, where independence often takes precedence over community ideals. Being there for people who need us and doing acts of kindness are all things that it pushes us to do. Every act of service, whether it's working, helping a friend, or just being there to listen, makes our lives better and the lives of others better as well. Putting this concept into practice every day not only helps us grow as people, but it also makes the world a better place for everyone. It serves as a warning that our quest for personal growth is linked to our capacity to help others. By doing this, we live up to the true spirit of Stoicism, which combines personal growth with service to others to create a life with deep meaning and purpose. Being of help to others, the fourth principle of Stoicism, is not just an idea, it's also a way to live a happy life. Being taught that our deeds, no matter how small, can make a difference for the better, builds a sense of community and support that is very important in today's busy world. Adopting this idea not only makes our own lives better, but it also makes the lives of those around us better, which is what Stoicism is all about. Have you ever stopped to marvel at how the seasons change with less effort? How the cold grip of winter gives way to the bright flowers of spring with such ease? This normal cycle happens without any help. But when things change in our own lives, like when we lose a job, end a relationship, or move to a new place, our first reaction is to fight them. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, once said, it's not what happens to you that matters, but how you react to it. When we try to go against the flow of life, we end up tired and beaten. However, accepting these changes and going with the flow rather than fighting them is the true spirit of freedom and resilience. Think about how life itself works. All of it is about change and progress. Even though it is very grand, Rome wasn't built in just one day. In the same way, you are a work of art that is always being changed and improved. Every change in your life, every sudden turn or twist, 
is like a new brushstroke on the painting of your life. These times, whether they seem good or bad, are part of the complicated work of art that is your life. So remember, the next time something unexpected happens in your life, take a moment to remember that it's all part of a bigger plan. It's a chance to give your own creation more depth and color. Accept whatever comes to you woven in the pattern of your destiny, Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic teacher said. What better advice could you get? From this point of view, it's not about being inactive. It's about seeing how powerful it is to go with the flow of life. We not only find acceptance when we accept change, but also a deep sense of peace and purpose. Like the Stoic sages did, we learn to handle the ups and downs of life with a calm mind and a strong spirit. Please remember that every change is an important part of your personal growth and a sign that you are becoming the best version of yourself. It's easy to think that expensive things and the newest gadgets will make you happy in a world where people show off their wealth on social media sites like Instagram. This current trend brings us to a key stoic principle, the importance of developing inner wealth. This materialistic view has a nice counterpoint in the work of ancient thinkers like Seneca. Seneca's wise words teach us that real wealth isn't having the newest gadgets or dressing in the best names. It's not about money, but about the wealth in our hearts and our ability to enjoy life deeply and completely. This kind of wealth can't be seen or touched. It's the happiness of the heart, the richness of great events, and the prize of treasured memories. Think about the story of a friend who, instead of getting more stuff, has traveled to many places and gained a lot of adventures and stories. They may not have a lot of worldly things, but they have a lot of memories and adventures. The story of this friend is very different from the story of someone who has a lot of expensive things, but none of these deep, meaningful experiences. These kinds of stories help us understand that real wealth is not in our things, but in our ability to enjoy every moment of life. Stoic thinkers say we should enjoy the nice things in life, but they also say we shouldn't let them decide how happy we are. The never-ending search for money and material things often leads to a meaningless life. We should instead focus on making stories, taking care of relationships, and growing spiritually. These are the things that make our lives truly wonderful, not how much money we have or how many things we own. After this, let's look at a story that is connected. Imagine someone who spends their whole life trying to get ahead in their job and ends up with a nice house, nice cars, and an amazing way of life. But in their quest, they don't pay attention to their relationships or their own growth. This is different from someone who picks a simpler life and focuses on growing as a person, making strong connections, and having important experiences. Over time, the second type often feels more fulfilled and happy than the first type, even though they have fewer things. So try to get rich on the inside instead of getting rich on the outside. This doesn't mean giving up comforts and things you can buy, but it does mean realizing that happiness and wealth come from inside. It's about loving the present, cherishing events, and putting relationships ahead of things. Adopting this stoic concept can help us live more meaningful lives, full of experiences and personal growth, instead of just collecting things that make us feel good for a short time. It's easy to complain and wish your life were easier when you're dealing with a tough situation, like a demanding boss, a pile of bills, or the all too commonly late train. Seneca, a wise Stoic said, difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. This idea encourages us to see our problems as mental exercises that shape our inner resilience, not as burdens. When trouble comes your way, instead of asking, why me? Let's ask, what is this teaching me? Every problem we face has lessons and chances to grow as people. It's all about how you look at it. 
If the Stoic thinkers were alive today, they probably would say, bring it on. These problems aren't just problems. They're opportunities to learn more about yourself and grow. These hard times teach us to be patient, persistent and flexible. We not only learn, but we also strengthen our resilience by accepting difficulties as a necessary component of life. Let's see these problems as adding color and complexity to our lives. Let's start with a hypothetical situation. You're new to a big tech company and have been given a very important project to work on. Your boss sets high standards and you have to deal with tight deadlines, a lot of work and how the team works together. You don't give up when things get tough. Instead, you see them as chances to show how good you are at managing your time, staying organized and doing well under pressure. You learn how to work better, get along with others better, and most importantly, how to handle stress better. By the end of the project, you've not only completed your job, but you've also become stronger and better prepared to face the difficulties of life and work. The fact that this happened shows that problems can be used to grow and improve people. Remember that everyone faces difficulties. What makes us unique is how we react to them and what we learn from them to become less dependent on them. Avoiding problems isn't the key to success. You need to face and overcome them with strength and knowledge. Marcus Aurelius, another famous Stoic, once said, what stands in the way of action becomes the way. Every problem hides a gift, a chance to learn and get better. So when you face a task next time, take it on. Think of it as a chance to learn, grow and become stronger. This is what Stoicism is all about and it's a strong way to learn how to stop thinking about small things and instead focus on what's important, your growth, your resilience, and your journey through life. When life seems to be going non-stop, it's important to remember what Marcus Aurelius said, our happiness depends not on external events, but on the quality of our thoughts. This timeless stoic wisdom reminds us that even when things are crazy around us, we can still find peace in our own minds. Imagine making a peaceful haven in the middle of a storm. That's how strong our thoughts are. Reflections we do every day are like a mirror that shows us our feelings, thoughts and knowledge. It is important to set aside time every day to think about ourselves and get to the core of who we are. Self-awareness isn't the only goal of this practice. It's also a way to reroute our life's direction it's like a necessary system update for your life that will keep you running at your best. When we think about what we did, it's not just to look at what went wrong, it's also to learn and grow from it. Celebrate every win, no matter how small, because they are steps on the path of your life. Imagine that you are under a lot of stress at work and things are not going as planned. You can give in to your anger and blame or you can look for good ways to solve the problem. By choosing to be positive and focused on solutions, you make a safe place for yourself to be at peace. This method not only makes you feel better, but it also changes the way you work, which leads to better results. It shows how the stoic concept of using knowledge and positive thinking to make a difference in your daily life works. Following these rules doesn't mean you have to be cold or distant. Instead, they teach us resilience and patience. We can find real peace and happiness by getting to know ourselves and facing life with a strong will. When we apply these stoic ideas to modern life, they help us figure out how to get through the complicated world we live in. That's why Seneca said, to the point, life is like a play. It's not the length, but the excellence of the acting that matters. This quote sums up the Stoic philosophy of focusing on the quality of our actions and thoughts instead of the outside situations. It serves as a warning that our part in life's big stage is not measured by how long we play it, but by how real and deep our character is. To sum up, 
This concept is a strong way to improve yourself and find peace within yourself. It requires us to calm our minds, learn from our mistakes, and approach life with optimism and resilience. By following these rules, we not only make our own lives better, but we also make the world a better place. Do not let the future disturb you, for you will arrive there if you nurture your present, Marcus Aurelius once said. This is a wise saying that really hits home. We lose sight of the present moment when our lives are full of messages and we move at a speed that is faster than our internet. Think about those walks in the park where your feet stay on the path, but your mind goes to all the things you need to do tomorrow, or those family dinners where you don't enjoy the laughs and stories because your mind is stuck on mistakes from the past. The Stoics' timeless ideas tell us that the moment is a gift that is worth keeping. So why do we let it slip through our fingers because we're worried about what could have been or what has been? Being truly present means more than just paying attention. It means letting all of life wash over you. Enjoying a meal, paying close attention to a friend, or feeling the soft touch of the wind are all easy ways to find happiness. We can see the beauty of the moment when we let go of the worries of yesterday and the worries of tomorrow. Picture an artist who gets lost in the details of a symphony. Not only is each note played, but it is also felt, making a melody that goes beyond time. It's not about the missed note from yesterday or the show tomorrow at that moment. It's just the music in its best form, embracing both the singer and the crowd in a timeless hug. The idea behind this concept is that we should not link our lives together with regret or fear, but with times of being fully present. Every little thing that doesn't seem important at the time adds up to a happy and satisfied life when fully experienced. Let's remember ourselves to be like the artist and fully enjoy the song of the present as we go about our daily lives. We not only make our own lives better, but we also show others how to do the same, creating a world where every moment is valued and loved. It's a rainy Tuesday morning, which makes the whole day seem sad. You just made the perfect cup of tea, which is a small but important win in the morning routine. Your cat knocks it over just as you're about to take a sip, which is both funny and naughty. Depending on how you feel right now, you might be angry, blame the poor cat, or even wonder what the world is trying to do. We should stop and think about things, though, a stoic view. Seneca, a stoic philosopher, said, We suffer more in our minds than in real life. These words have been remembered for many years. This event, which is small but annoying, shows how smart he is. Cats will be cats, and tea will spill. These are things we can't change. We do have control over how we respond. We don't have to give in to a downward slide of negativity and imagine a day wrecked because of a spilled cup. We can choose a different path, laugh it off, make another cup, and see this simple mistake for what it is, a small glitch in the big picture. This idea applies to more than just our homes. Think about how frustrating it is when your Wi-Fi stops working during a Zoom call or when your pizza delivery is cold. It's not the event itself that bothers us, but how we think about it. By shifting our point of view, we can turn these frustrating situations into chances to work on our patience and ability to change. For guys in this age group who often feel stressed out by work, family and personal goals, Incorporating the Stoic concept into daily life can be very helpful. It's a warning to pay attention to the things we can change, like our actions, responses and attitudes. We develop inner calm and resilience as a result, which are important for coping with the difficulties of modern life. This quote from Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic philosopher, says it all. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. It sums up the core of Stoicism and is a source of motivation. 
It tells us that even when things are crazy outside, we still have control over our own minds. Have you ever had a moment to think about why you go through every problem and trouble in your life? Do you ever wonder if there is a deeper reason for the hard things you go through? Some people may think it sounds like another motivating quote you see on social media. What if I told you it's more than that though? What if I told you that this idea comes from an old philosophy that has been around for a long time? Stoicism is the school of thought that teaches us not only to deal with life's problems, but also to accept them with peace and understanding. We can find the core of Stoicism in the virtues that make us who we are today. This ancient advice can help us find our way through the hardest times and guide us on our daily journey. Stoicism provides us with important lessons for living, whether we are dealing with personal or professional problems, unexpected challenges, or just the ups and downs of everyday life. Even when bad things happen, it gives us a way to not only survive, but also thrive. We learn from it that changing our situations won't make our lives more satisfying. What matters is how we react to them. This quote tells us to have a strong attitude and find strength in our own ability to change and grow when things get hard. You've come to the right place if you've ever felt like you're always going against the current, if you've ever thought how to find calm in the middle of a storm, or if you're just interested in how old knowledge can help us understand modern life. We will learn to live with purpose, honesty, and an inner power that can't be broken. We will have the chance to grow, change, and find new ways to face life with courage and determination at every step of this path. Every moment will be meant to move you, give you strength, and show you the way to being real and whole. You will not want to miss any part of this life-changing event. 1. Take a look at your own limits. Have you ever been content with less than what you could have? Our lives often have times when we don't really question the limits we've set for ourselves for days, weeks, or even years. But this is where the important question comes up. Why not? It's a simple question, but it can help us get past the fear and routine that are holding us back. Now, the Stoics were not inactive. They did not let life happen to them because they were full of Stoicism. They took charge of their lives and constantly looked at their choices, actions and relationships through the lens of virtue and self-improvement. Socrates would ask, why not take the path that leads to growth, when they had to make a choice or deal with a problem? Making decisions that are in line with your better self and core ideals is what it's all about, not taking mindless chances. So, when you're at a crossroads and not sure whether to step into the unknown or make your efforts better, stop and ask yourself, why? Why not try to get that raise, start that project, or trust your dreams. Our futures are shaped in these times of choice. But here's the catch. Why is it not just about facing problems from the outside? Why is it also about facing stories inside our heads that hold us back? It's about fighting self-doubt, fear of failing, and being happy with the way things are. It's a call to action that tells you to stop being average and accept your greatness. Remember all the Stoic heroes you know, like Marcus Aurelius and Seneca. They didn't settle for a quiet, easy life. Instead, they saw problems as chances to grow. The road of virtue, resilience, and personal achievement was taken by them. When you ask yourself, why not? You are doing just that. You're ready to take on life head on, to learn and grow, and to come out of it better and smarter. When you start to question yourself, remember that you have the power to change the story and the strength to go beyond what you think you can do. Think like a Stoic and ask yourself, why not? See how far your interest, courage and dedication can take you. 2. Focus on making progress. 
This never-ending search for improvement fits nicely with Marcus Aurelius's idea of always moving forward or being a project that is changing. Focusing on what they could change, like their virtues, deeds and reactions to things happening around them, was important to the Stoics. They didn't try to be perfect, instead, they wanted to get better. That's what I want you to do. With less thought, seek progress. Whether you're trying to improve your work skills, make your relationships stronger, or find inner peace that motivates you, progress is what matters. Development is at the heart of a happy life. In tune with the stoic virtue of self-control, you are always looking for ways to make yourself better. You're on a journey to become the best version of yourself, not for praise or approval from other people, but because it's the most authentic way to live by your values. There is a difference between being obsessed with improving yourself and being mean or forgiving to yourself. Being obsessed with improving yourself means being kind and determined to grow. It means being happy about the little wins and looking forward to the next step in your growth. Yeah, there will be mistakes and failures along the way, but like a true stoic, you won't see them as losses. Instead, you'll see them as lessons and steps toward getting better. So how do you keep this fixation on progress going? Set clear, conscious goals that are in line with your core ideals as a first step. Think about your choices and acts every day and ask yourself, how do they fit with your growth goals? Live your life with desire and a goal. It is said that Stoics have a lot of stamina, are strong and are always true to their beliefs. When they commit to something, they give it their all, not because they want praise or attention, but because they know that this is the key to having a good life with meaning. They aren't half committed to their jobs or hobbies, they give their all to them. They are living proof that the value of our actions doesn't lie in the results, but in how committed we are to them. Their full attention and efforts are focused on their businesses, no matter what they are. The things they think, choose and do don't make their lives happen by chance. They actively shape their future. It's not enough to just think big. You have to also act big. It is those brave and determined steps that keep them going, even when the road ahead is rough and full of unknowns. But here's an important thing to remember. Giving it your all isn't just about what you do. It's also about how you do it. Sincerity, desire and honesty are important when it comes to your tasks, your relationships and your personal growth. Giving it your all whether you're working on a project, spending time with loved ones, or thinking about your own growth in light of the problems that will surely come up. It means meeting them with courage and resilience, using your inner power to get through difficult times. So how can you begin to give it your all in your own life? Find out what's most important to you, your core beliefs, your most important goals, and your greatest hobbies. Then, Make a promise to follow them with all your heart. Hold yourself to high standards and work hard every day, not because you feel like you have to, but because you want to live a full and honest life. Remember that giving your all is not something you do just once. It's something you do every day, with every breath. If you follow this philosophy, it will not only help you reach your goals, but it will also give you a great sense of meaning and satisfaction on your trip. Come with me on this trip. Let's support and encourage each other to live with unshakable passion and purpose and leave a lasting heritage of greatness and virtue. 4. Keep going in the same direction. Let's be honest, the world is full of things that can pull our attention away and make us want to stray. Yet, this is where the real magic takes place. A stand for something bigger is what you do when you stick to your plan, even when there is a lot of noise and chaos around you. In the end, you are respecting your path, your beliefs, and yourself. The Stoics knew that life is full of things that can take our attention away from our real purpose. 
but they also knew how important it was to stay the course and stick to your principles and goals. Staying strong and determined on your way isn't just about getting things done, it's also about having ethics and character. What does it mean for you to keep going? Being clear about your life's path means knowing what you stand for, what you want to achieve, and what kind of person you want to be. When you do this, you keep your eyes on your North Star and use it to guide you, even when it rains and the water gets rough. The important thing is to remember that staying on your path doesn't mean being fixed or unwilling to change. Life is unexpected, and part of keeping true to your path is being flexible, learning from your experiences and changing your sails when necessary. Most importantly, these changes should always be in line with your core values and long-term goals. How are you going to stay on track? Self-awareness is the first step. Give yourself some time to think about your beliefs, your goals, and your life's purpose. Use them as your guide. Develop the discipline to make decisions that fit your path, even when they are difficult or unpopular. Resilience is also important, so keep in mind. As you go through problems or hurdles, remember that they are chances to get stronger and more committed to your journey. 5. Don't worry about the findings. People often tell us to keep our eyes on the goal and judge our success by what we've already done. However, what if I told you that letting go of success gives you a lot of freedom and power? Where Stoicism really shines is in giving us a deeply freeing view that can change how we see life and what success means to us. According to the Stoics, there are some things we can manage and some things we can't. We can choose to work hard, have good goals and have the right attitude, but we can't always control what happens. By keeping our eyes on the end result, we prepare for anger, sadness and even hopelessness because we are hanging on to something we can't handle. What does it mean to stop focusing on results? Putting our whole selves into something means giving it our all, whether it's a work job, a personal goal, or a friendship. It means giving the process our full attention and being open to the difficulties and chances to learn that come up without getting too tied to the end result. Think about how freeing it would be to do your job with love and dedication, not because you think it will get you awards or praise, but because you believe in what you're doing. This is what Stoic advice is all about, finding meaning and happiness in the things you do, not just the things they might lead to. But let's be clear, not focused on results doesn't mean you don't care about success or don't set goals. It means you change how you define success to include your own acts, character, courage, and commitment. You have learned and grown. From a stoic point of view, these are the real ways to measure progress. What are some ways you can start to think this way? First, think about what you stand for and what kind of person you want to be. So, instead of focusing on the benefits you can get from the outside world, Think about the traits you want to develop and the things you want to do. When you're worried about how things are going, gently tell yourself of what you can change and try to focus your energy on your efforts and mood. 6. What you give off will come back to you. Imagine that your life is like a mirror that shows both what you show the world and what's inside you. If you are filled with anger, fear or hatred, these characteristics can taint your experiences and relationships. On the other hand, if you work on virtues like honesty, kindness, and mental strength, they will show in your life and bring you good relationships and situations. People who believed in Stoicism stressed how important it was to build a strong, good character because they knew that this is what makes life worth living. They thought it was impossible to change the world around you, but that you could change how you behave in that setting. You will simply create a life that reflects those virtues by focusing on being the best version of yourself. How, then, can you live by this concept 
in your everyday life. Start by taking time to think about your thoughts, feelings and actions on a regular basis and judging them seriously, but with kindness. Finding ways to get better and grow is important. Also, work on developing virtues that are important to you, like concern for others, courage in the face of hardship, or persistence in reaching your goals. Keep in mind that this doesn't mean being perfect or not making mistakes. It just means being aware of your inner state and how it shows up in the outside world. It means trying to make sure that your actions are in line with your greatest values, even when that's hard. When you fail, which we all do, it means having the humility and resilience to learn from your mistakes and keep going on your path to becoming better yourself. When you follow stoic advice, you give yourself the power to create your own world. You realize that you can't change everything that happens to you, but you can change how you respond and who you choose to be. As you connect your being with your greatest ideals, the world around you will start to show the same quality and depth. Take the test right now. Think about the problems you've had to deal with in your life. These things happen to everyone, whether they're small annoyances or big problems. Anger, disappointment, or even hopelessness might be our first response. So what if we see these problems as hidden chances or pushes for growth instead? Growth and study of oneself. For me, that's what this Stoic concept is all about. When the Stoics talked about problems, they didn't play them down or say that life wasn't hard. They were well aware of the pain and problems that each problem can cause. However, they also thought that within each barrier lay the seed of an equal or greater advantage. It's not the problem itself that makes us fail, but how we handle it. When we choose to see a problem as a chance, we stop being passive consumers of our situations and become active and powerful change agents. How can you use the idea that the problem is the way in your everyday life? When you're facing a problem, start by changing the way you think about it. Take a moment to ask yourself, can I draw from this? How can I use this situation to help me grow instead of letting problems drain my energy and mental health? Resilience, creativity and perseverance can all be strengthened by overcoming challenges. Keep in mind that the best roads are often the ones that are the hardest. Your character and personal story are shaped by the problems you face, the obstacles you get past and the drive you show. Each challenge gives you a chance to work on virtues like patience, courage and flexibility, which will make you smarter and stronger. Also, remember that getting past problems often takes creative thought and a desire to go in new directions. This is the time of trouble when we are told to broaden our views, think in new ways and find skills we didn't know we had. Stoics teach us to be grateful for the growth they allow us by helping us deal with problems in a calm way. Learning to value the journey with all of its ups and downs and understanding that the most important lessons are often learned through hardship. Eighth, do not a lot, but do it well. There are so many things in the world that it's easy to feel stressed by how big our goals are or how hard our problems are. We might ask, what does my intervention have to do with this? We might only make a small difference, but that's how big things are made, by the sum of their parts, which are made up of small acts that may not seem important at first. People who follow the Stoic philosophy know that we can't change big things that happen, but we can change the choices we make. Instead of getting stuck on how big the job at hand is or getting too focused on the faraway goal, they tell us to pay attention to the present and do what is right and necessary at that very moment. We should do the little things we can to be called to action and be encouraged to live our lives with purpose and hard work, even if our efforts seem small or unimportant. How can we use this idea in our everyday lives? First, we can break down our most important goals into steps that are easier to handle and more likely to be reached. 
Let's think about what we can get done today, even if it's just a little bit. Remember that it is the regularity and determination that is important, not the scope of our activities. Each small step is important because it builds a base that will support our bigger goals in the long run. This stoic way of thinking also gives us the courage to find worth and meaning in the process, not just the outcome. Focusing on the small things we can do makes us more aware of the moment, more involved, and often more productive. We learn to value the road, with all of its ups and downs, because we know that our daily actions and attitudes are what make us grow and feel fulfilled. In addition to developing humility and resilience, this philosophy also helps us recognize that we are not all powerful, but it also reinforces our ability to influence and take action. When we learn to change and keep going, even when progress seems slow or impossible, we become adaptive. 9. Change how you think about success. Sometimes financial wealth, job titles or social media fans are used to measure success. This can make it easy to lose sight of what's really important. But what would happen if we stopped and thought about what success really meant to us? Stoic philosophy adherents tell us that building a strong character that works with nature and meets our human functions to be whole, brave and wise, regardless of our circumstances, is the key to true success. This way of looking at success is very powerful because it gives us the power to take action. We may not be able to control the economy, the job market or how other people see us, but we can control our own deeds and virtues. So how can we start to change the way we think about success? Deep thought is the first step. Take some time to think about what you really believe in and what kind of person you want to be. Set goals that are in line with the virtues you respect in others and want to develop in yourself. Focus on your own growth and how you can make other people's lives better. To change what success means, you have to learn to value the process as well as the result. Even if the results don't show up right away, be proud of your hard work, resilience and advancement. Remember that in Stoicism, how you deal with problems is just as important as how well you reach your goals. Maintaining your ethics and composure in the face of less predictable external circumstances is key. You will also find that your idea of success can make you happier and more satisfied when you aren't always looking for approval from other people. Once you have that freedom, you can focus on what makes you truly happy and fulfilled. You will probably find that the practice of virtue and meaningful connection with the world are much more satisfying than any external accomplishments you may achieve. Number 10. Don't always try to get approval. These days, getting other people's support and recognition is very important. It's easy to lose who we are and forget our main goals and ideals when we try to please others. Individualism, on the other hand, is a strong contrast to this focus on the outside world. It reminds us that our qualities and decisions should be based on our own beliefs and virtues, not on what other people think. Some people who follow the Stoic philosophy say that trying to please others can turn into a form of slavery because we let their opinions and views control our actions and self-esteem. However, when we let go of this need for approval from other people, we feel a deep sense of freedom and sincerity. We can then act in line with our own values and beliefs, following what we really want. The rightness and importance of our choices don't depend on how well they do in the eyes of others. Then, how can we start to separate our deeds from the need to please? Developing strong self-awareness is essential first. To tell the difference between actions that come from wanting approval from others and those that come from being ourselves, we need to know what drives us. This isn't always easy because it requires being honest and thinking about yourself, but it is a necessary step toward a more genuine and satisfying life. Next, 
we need to build trust in our own choices and opinions. The Stoics stress how important it is to use reason and knowledge to decide what to do. When we believe in our own judgment and act in line with our well-thought-out beliefs, we count less on other people's support and can stick to our decisions even if they are seen negatively by others because we know they are based on our core values. It's also important to realize that we can't please everyone, which is not only okay, but also normal and unavoidable. Each of us is a unique person with our own views, ideals and points of view. It is impossible to meet everyone's needs and if we tried, we would have to constantly change and adapt to meet other people's standards, which would mean losing who we are. Focusing on being genuine and honest with ourselves helps us find real relationships based on mutual respect and shared values. And when we get turned down, we can take heart in the fact that we are living with integrity and following our stoic beliefs. 11. Don't let anything confuse you. In a world that always wants our time, attention and energy, being able to say no to ourselves is a very useful skill. Not only do we have to say no to things we don't want to do, but we also have to stand up for our goals, values and independence. Stoic philosophy tells us to pay attention to what is truly important and within our control. This may mean turning down requests, chances or even demands that go against our core values. The Stoics believed that we should live in balance with nature, which means that we should know and accept our own boundaries. The knew that our time and energy are limited and that we need to be careful about how we use them. So knowing how to say no is very important. Being discerning helps us focus on what is truly important and helpful not just what is urgent or what other people want us to do. But, let's be honest, it can be very hard to say no. It takes courage, especially when we've been taught to please other people or are afraid of letting them down. Nevertheless, the stoic way of thinking teaches us to trust our own judgment and make choices based on reason and virtue rather than fear or peer pressure. It's not just turning down an offer when we say no with calm confidence. It's a deep statement about our values and our commitment to living an honest life. Do not worry about number 12. Let go with the help of ignorance. How can you really stop using indifference? Understanding and accepting the difference between what we can and cannot control is important. We can control our actions, our attitudes and our virtues, but not the results, the actions of others or the randomness of fate. It's easier to let go of the anger, stress and sadness that come from hanging on to things we can't change when we really understand this. But let's be clear, letting go with indifference doesn't mean you don't care. It means you care deeply about the right things the ones that are really up to you and are okay with the rest. It's about wisely using our energy, putting all of our heart and effort into what we do and letting go of our commitment to results. Just think about how much lighter you'd feel if you stopped feeling bad about everything that didn't go the way you wanted it to and stopped getting caught up in problems that don't really affect your rights and responsibilities. Stoicism offers freedom a way to find inner peace and resilience no matter what life throws at you. So how do we get better at this skill of letting go without caring? Mindfulness is the first step. We must pay attention to our responses and gently tell ourselves of what we can control and what we cannot. Like any skill worth learning, it also needs practice. It's possible to start small with everyday jobs and work our way up to bigger problems. We will likely find something amazing as we practice. The less we try to control what we can't control, the more control we have over ourselves and our reactions, the more calm and clear we will feel. We learn that our greatest power lies in our ability to choose our reaction, focused on what is truly important and letting go with grace, even in the middle of chaos, 
as we travel the road of life and embrace the knowledge of Stoicism. Remember that the way to peace, happiness and success is not through awards or material things. Instead, it is through developing virtue, persistence and inner peace. Have you ever felt like your mind was going around and around and around? Sometimes our thoughts can take over and make us lose our way. It's hard to focus because we're always thinking about other things and having talks with ourselves. If any of this sounds similar, I want to suggest that you look into a source that can help you see things differently. This part of the video shows you 10 methods based on Stoicism that can help you get back in control and see things more clearly. You can use these techniques as direction points to get back to awareness and action. This will help you get over your fears and focus on what's important. You might be having a lot of thoughts at once, but each of these techniques is like a lighthouse showing you the way to peace and calm. You will learn to notice your thoughts, decide if they are true, and change the way you think as you go on this journey of self-discovery. It's not enough to just change. You need to get better every day, clear your mind, and find an inner power that will help you through everything. This trip gives you a chance to learn and find the peace you want. Don't miss the first lesson on how to calm your mind. Come with me and learn how powerful peace and calm can be. I'll be waiting for you on the first road, which is to accept that things change and work on letting go. Picture yourself on the edge of the huge ocean of life, where the waves are always changing. This picture makes me think of the core of Stoic philosophy, an old school of thought that teaches us to accept that things are always changing. Life is like those same waves, according to the old Stoic philosophers, it rises and falls less frequently. We will have happy and sad times, win and lose, and everything will change at some point. They serve as a reminder that we can't fully change our fate or stop the flow of life. Not wanting to be in charge of everything frees us up when we learn to let go. Not only is this release a lesson, it's also a strong choice to accept life as it is and face its difficulties with courage. When we stop trying to be in charge of everything, we become one with life's natural flow. There are changes along the way, and we learn that being able to handle them with calm and patience shows how strong we are. We are no longer in a mad rush to master everything. Instead, we are learning to enjoy each moment without holding on too tightly. Take the case of losing your job during hard times as an example. When we remember that life is more than just work, we understand that our job is not the only thing that defines us. Family, friends, sports, and our own goals are also important to us, and worries about work shouldn't get in the way of them. Realizing that everything in life is temporary makes us feel less stressed and lets us solve our problems with more calm and clarity. Remember that life is short and worth living. Being able to handle change and emotions without getting attached to them helps us enjoy every moment more. It helps us stop thinking too much about things and find peace within ourselves in a world that is always changing. Do you think that we should accept that things change and work on letting go? Share your thoughts. Number two, make a time when you worry. People in this world are often plagued by pointless fears and thoughts that drag them down for hours on end. Stoic philosophy tells us that the key to finding peace of mind is to set aside a certain amount of time to think about these things. Not only does this give these fears a place to go, but it also gives us back control of our minds. Stoics say that setting aside a certain time each day to deal with these bad activities and thoughts is a good way to avoid overthinking. But how can we use this in our everyday lives? Here are four useful ways to do that. First, set aside a certain time each day, like right when you wake up in the morning or right before bed, to only think about your problems. 
This will help you concentrate on a certain time and keep your fears from taking over your whole day. Another thing you can do is write down or use an app on your phone to keep track of your fears these days. Writing down these thoughts will help you clear your mind and keep them separate from your daily life. Third, after writing down your worries, look over them and get rid of them in an objective way. Think about whether they really need your instant care or if you can put them off for now. Make a plan for how to handle those unique issues that might come up. Finally, after the time you set aside to worry, make it your goal to stop thinking about those things. Take a good breath and focus on the here and now. This will help you enjoy your life without being stressed out all the time. Imagine that you are someone who worries about money all the time. You feel stressed every time you look at your bank account or think about your bills even on the weekends when you're just hanging out with your family. But if you set aside time every night to look over your finances and solve problems, you will be able to enjoy time with your family without worrying all the time. That way, your life will be more peaceful and enjoyable. Setting aside time each day to worry is a smart and useful way to apply stoic ideas to your everyday life. It helps you stop overthinking and gives you other benefits like keeping your mind in check and making your life more balanced. Now let's look at Luke's story. He was nervous about giving a speech in front of a big group of people. Stress and fear filled his mind as he thought about the event over and over again. But by applying a key concept, Luke saw that these scary thoughts were not a natural part of him. He learned to handle them by picturing them going away. He put some space between himself and the audience, which made him feel more sure about his talk. How did Luke feel so sure of himself during the talk in front of a big crowd? The answer is to picture what will happen next. Third, think of your too many thoughts as an outside force. Before the mental tornado swallows you up, Try picturing that your thoughts are not a part of you, but an outside force that you can see and name. By doing this, you put some space between yourself and those ideas. You're no longer caught up in the strong current of bad thoughts. You take charge. Think about facing that outside force as if you were a hero facing an enemy. You understand that you have the power to beat it. Think about those ideas as a rushing river, for instance. You stop letting the stream carry you away and become the master of your own ship, successfully managing the rough waters. You show that you have power and choice by facing those unwanted thoughts and taking charge of them instead of letting them run your life. In this process, you use what you know and can do to beat the enemy, like a fighter using his tools. Each time you win, you feel better about your ability to handle your overthinking. You can also make better choices about how to deal with those feelings if you look at them with a more objective eye. You know there are many parts to life and that overthinking is just one of them. You can focus on the interesting parts of your life if you picture those thoughts as outside forces. You understand that those bad thoughts are not the only thing in life and that frees you from having to judge yourself based on them. If you follow this concept, you will see a difference in how you deal with overthinking. You'll feel stronger and like you can handle any problem that comes your way. Number four, how short life is. People have told us many times that life is short. But what if I told you that fleetingness holds a lot of meaning and chance? Stoic philosophy tells us to accept that life is short, to find worth in every moment, and to let go of unimportant worries. Think about it this way. Have you ever worried about things that weren't important and then realized it was a waste of time? Take the case of being worried about losing your job as an example. Please take a moment to think about how big life is. Besides work, does that worry really need to take up so much of your mind? Having a patient attitude helps us realize that life is too short to waste on small issues. 
Stoic philosophy tells us not to worry about bad things or small problems, but to focus on what really matters. Living a worthwhile life and enjoying each experience as a part of our journey. Every mistake is a chance to learn, and every win is a gift. We learn to enjoy every moment and find joy in the smallest things. Realizing how short life is helps us see our troubles in a bigger picture. We stop worrying about the future and be fully present in the moment with a happy attitude. In the end, thinking about how short life is teaches us to treasure each moment as a present. It frees us from fears that aren't important and helps us find peace in accepting that things will change. So why focus on the unimportant when we can do something more important with our time and energy? You should live your life with happiness and thanks because it is a valuable gift. Fifth, turn your attention to being thankful. Imagine a world where people learn to value not only the hard things that happen to them, but also the little bits of happiness and secret gems that life gives them. Stoic philosophy left us a strong teaching on gratitude that goes on today. We are encouraged to learn more about this virtue and use it in our daily lives. Being grateful is more than just making a list of our things. It's about recognizing their worth and telling them how much we appreciate them. Being grateful for both the big and the small things in life can have a big effect on our lives and change them in important ways. Here are three ways to start living a happier life by being more grateful. First, make a list of things you're thankful for. What are some good things in your life, like your health, important relationships, or small pleasures you enjoy every day? It's important to respect everything. This list will help you remember the good things in your life when you're feeling less than motivated. Second, Think about how everything changes. The world can change at any time and nothing stays the same. Learn to enjoy the present moment and see the beauty in the ways your relationships and daily interactions are changing. You will feel less stressed and anxious when facing the unknown thanks to this awareness. Third, show thanks every day. Every morning or evening, Take a moment to think about what you're thankful for and say thank you. Every moment is a chance to be thankful for something, from small wins to big adventures to important interactions. This practice will help you feel better about yourself and make you happier with your life. Seneca once said, True happiness consists in enjoying the present without anxious dependence on the future. If you want to live a happier and more meaningful life, learn to focus on gratitude. It will help you find joy in the present moment and free you from worrying too much about tomorrow. Sixth, accept the pain you choose to feel in order to deal with any discomfort that comes your way. Have you ever been through times in your life when everything seemed to be against you? The Stoic philosophy gives us a good point of view it gives us the courage to welcome comfort rather than avoid it as a chance to get better and move forward. At its core, it tells us to face the problems we face every day and use them as opportunities to grow as people. Take the following scenario. You choose to push your mind and body by cutting back on bad foods. Not only does this make you more disciplined, but it also makes you healthier generally. In the same way, Doing things you don't want to do, like working out or doing boring jobs, helps you get better at getting past problems and dealing with bad situations. Facing problems on purpose not only makes you stronger, but it also makes you more flexible. Think about how good it feels to learn something new, like how to play an instrument. It might feel overwhelming and annoying at first, but as you keep at it, you get better and feel more secure. You also learn how to deal with bad thoughts and worries in a calm and patient way when you face them. As Marcus Aurelius said in his meditations, the art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. Facing your fears, 
like those of public speaking or social situations, can help you gain confidence and mental self-control. There are hard times in life, but there are also lots of chances to grow and do well. Would you be willing to use this idea as a guide on your own journey? Take charge of a highway. There are some tricky turns on this mountain road. As your car goes up the hill, even though you checked it before you left, you start to feel uncertain. Stress starts to get to you, and you worry that you might have an accident or breakdown in the middle of the mountain road. You're not sure if you've done enough to get ready. What if you have to deal with a situation that you didn't expect? These feelings show that you are unsure about your emotions and worry too much, which means that your mind is on things that you can't change. The Stoic Circle of Control is what Stoic thinkers say we should do. We should only think about what we can control. We don't need to pay attention to or care about anything outside of this circle. The first step in this Stoic method is to realize when we are worried too much or focusing on problems we can't fix. Once we know what it is, we need to change how we think and act about other parts of our lives. This could mean doing things that are in line with our morals, having fun with a hobby, or just focusing on something that needs our full attention. We break the circle of overthinking and feel like we have control over our lives again when we focus on what we can change. This helps us focus on doing things that will help us grow as people and bring about good results. It is important to remember that we can control how we respond to things that happen to us, but not the things themselves. This way of thinking, which is backed up by Stoic philosophy, can help you stop worrying too much and find peace and calm in the moment. Do not let stress take over as you deal with the difficulties in life. Instead, remember that you can always choose how to react to things. You could, for example, listen to an interesting podcast or do stress-relieving breathing exercises while you're stuck in traffic instead of getting angry about something you can't change. In this way, you can turn a stressful scenario into a chance to grow as a person and improve your mental health. You are always looking for knowledge and wisdom, so don't look to other people for it. Stoic philosophy always encourages us to think outside of our own minds. A lot of the time, we stick to what we know and use rules we've learned from books or our own thoughts. If I told you that real knowledge comes from getting out of our comfort zones and being willing to learn from others, would you believe me? Imagine that you're talking to a friend about a problem and all of a sudden they give you a whole new way to look at it. That's an easy way to look for knowledge in things other than yourself. But looking for external knowledge is more than just having a talk. It also means studying the ideas of great thinkers from the past, like the Stoics, and listening to what other people have to say. Let me give you a real-life case to show this. A guy I know called Alex was having a hard time with stress at work and in his home life. He chose to join a group that talked about Stoic philosophy and ask his friend Emily for help because she knew a lot about how to live a good life. Alex learned better ways to deal with stress and keep her life in balance by listening to others and taking in new ideas and tips. But knowledge doesn't just come from close friends and family. It also comes from different points of view. It helps us understand the world and find new things about life to listen to and understand different points of view, even those from people whose culture and faith are different from our own. Remember that books and common knowledge aren't the only places to find wisdom. Personal stories and shared experiences are also great places to find wisdom. The path to outward knowledge is never-ending and rewarding. It gives us the chance to learn and grow every day. Think of this journey as watching a movie online. With each click, you'll find new lessons and points of view that will help you learn more about the world around you. Are you ready to let the knowledge that lies beyond you in? Pay attention to the work you do, not the results. 
We have many tasks and goals in our daily lives that need our full attention and hard work all the time. We often make detailed plans, try to guess what will happen and expect everything to go exactly as we imagined. But life shows us that plans don't always work out the way we think they will. This is something that Stoic philosophy always tells us of. We often worry and stress about the wrong things because we are too focused on the end result. But here's the thing. We can choose how to do something, but not always what will happen. So, instead of dwelling on what might have been, we should pay attention to how we are doing the job and how much work we are putting into it. Picture yourself making a meal for your friends. There are many things that could go wrong with the end result, even if you follow the recipe to the letter and do everything you can to make it right. These could include the oven temperature or the quality of the ingredients. Don't worry about the end result. Instead, enjoy the process of cooking and the love you put into each step. You'll feel less stressed and enjoy the process of cooking more. The Stoic philosophy urges us to view setbacks as chances for growth and learning. Focusing on the effort not only makes us feel less stressed, but it also helps us get more done. We can enjoy the present and find value in every moment more when we keep our minds on the job at hand. For instance, if you're running a marathon, don't worry too much about where you stand in the race. Instead, keep your pace steady and enjoy every step. You will feel less stressed and be able to enjoy the experience more if you do this. Having this attitude of focusing on the work rather than the result helps us learn and grow without worry. This method helps us live a better, more important life where every moment is spent with honesty and worth. Break your thinking down into steps that you can take. Make it something you do every day. Some ideas are as light as flowers and others are as heavy as rocks. The mind is like a drawer full of them. We often get lost in our own thoughts as we think about big problems and complicated parts of life. We wonder why we feel this way and if there is a way to get out of these thoughts. Stoic philosophy, which gives us a useful way to deal with overthinking, can help us when we are feeling unsure and mentally heavy. Imagine that you have a huge collection of jobs that you think you will never be able to finish. The amount of work you have to do makes you feel stressed, but don't give up. You can get clear and make progress by following a certain plan. Based on stoic ideas, here are some easy steps that will help you break down this big problem into smaller tasks that you can handle. 1. Find the main job. To begin, make it clear which project or task is causing you the most stress and anxiety. The first step toward control is to fully understand what is going on. 2. Write down specific steps. Once you know what the goal is, start breaking it down into steps that you can take right now. In the case of a study project, this could include things like gathering data, analyzing it, or making reports. 3. Set priorities and take the first step. Once you know what needs to be done, put them in order of how important and urgent they are. Then pick a place to begin and do it. If you are writing an article, for instance, the first thing you might do is come up with ideas or look for sources that are useful. 4. Don't worry about the list of things you need to do next. Instead, focus on doing each step well and completely. Focus on the job at hand and give it your full attention. 5. Repeat the steps. When you're done with one, do the next one following the same steps. You'll feel better about your progress and more motivated to keep going with each small goal you reach. Breaking a big problem down into small steps that you can handle and focused on each one at a time will help you deal with stress better and make steady progress toward your goal. If you want to apply Stoic philosophy to your normal life, you need to find the balance between control and acceptance and keep going even when things get hard. 
As we close this chapter together, remember that the path you're on is one of continual growth and discovery. The questions we've pondered, the insights we've shared, and the wisdom we've revisited are not just fleeting moments of learning, but seeds planted in the fertile ground of your life. These teachings, though ancient, have shown their timeless relevance, guiding us toward inner peace, resilience, and a deeper understanding of what it means to live a good life. Take these lessons with you as you move forward, applying them to the complexities of modern existence with the simplicity and strength they offer. Remember, the journey toward mastering your emotions, finding joy in simplicity, and cultivating a serene mind is not a destination, but a way of living. It's about making choices that align with your deepest values, responding to life's challenges with equanimity, and always striving to be the best version of yourself. As you continue on your path, let the principles of Stoicism be your guide, your compass, and your comfort. Reflect on them in moments of uncertainty and let them inform your actions in times of decision. The journey of a Stoic is a rewarding one, filled with profound insights and the potential for profound transformation. Thank you for sharing this journey with us. May you walk the path of Stoicism with confidence, curiosity, and an open heart, ready to embrace whatever life brings your way with wisdom, courage, and joy. Here's to your continued exploration and growth in the art of living wisely and well.